It's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free and bring up whatever is on your mind. Our number here is 855-450-FREE, like freedom. That's 855-450-3733. We've got the Discord on-air call in line rooms as well. It's discord.lrn.fm. You can hop into any one of those. There's four of them open and available to you over on discord.lrn.fm. That's our chat server. It's got chat rooms that are there 24 hours a day. And uh, during our live show, which is 7 to 10 at night Eastern time, all seven nights a week. Yes, that's right. We are live here on Saturday night. Uh, During our live show, you can use those Discord rooms to call the show and sound almost like you're sitting here in the studio with us. It's Ian. And Mark. Mark, start us out here tonight. Uh, Thor, apparently. That's all you got to say, really. Is a religion for some people. <laughs> well, yes. Like Marvel's Thor or Thor the the Norse, is it Norse? Yeah. God? Yeah, is that's that God? region. Yeah. Uh, refers to sort of the Scandinavian area. Um, I suspect what we're talking about is uh, somebody who worships, uh, you know, the Norse god Thor and probably recognizes the rest of them in the Pantheon or, or something. But uh, this is from um, businessinsider.com. A bearded U.S. Army soldier who worships Thor, the Norse god of thunder, is being permitted to keep his beard as part of the military's effort to be more religiously accommodating. Huh. Well, they are desperate for uh, for troops, and I think it was the army. I know that they uh, they met, I think they missed like their recruiting goal in the first recent, time since like 2005 or yeah, something. Recent years. Yeah. Um, I. Do what? I guess my question to you would be: uh, I don't think they're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. No. Why do soldiers need to have their face clean shaven? Um, maybe the same reason they got to have their hair short. Uh, you know, like if they're if they're grappling with uh, the enemy, they're in close quarters combat. Uh, if you don't have hair on you, then it's harder for your enemy to grab you. That's so- my guess. Okay, it's. I think knowing it's a nothing fine about guess. combat and not being a professional in any way on that that matter. Yeah, I think that's a fine guess. I think it's better than uh, than what most people are going to come up with. But a beard could be as short. Like, there's short, right? Not all. Um, the, it could be grabbable less. It could right. be impossible to grab. Yeah, right. there are people in the military that do not have hair that is so short, like shaved bald. So why does your face have to be shaved bald? It could be mm. shaved short, like your hair, at which point right. you could still have a beard. There are religions in this world that prefer beards for ones that don't. Um, I can come up with Noahide uh, Jews. I mean, I'm not sure Noahide's even the right term for somebody, but somebody who recognizes the Noahide religion, um, uh, Islam, Sikhs, and apparently this guy uh, who worships Thor. In 2017, the Army decided to allow soldiers to wear a turban, beard, or hijab uh, for religious reasons. Initially, religious accommodation of facial hair in the Army seemed to be directed at Sikhs. Uh, these are, and, and by the way, Sikhs are, they, they're always in the military. They're, they're, they're big into co- being cops, military, firefighters over in India, they, and that's their thing. So now, however, it appears this new Aren't policy— Sikhs Christians? No. No, okay. It's... Are the guys wearing, wearing the turban? It's its own religion. It's not... Okay. They are wearing a turban as opposed to something else, but they're their own religion. Gotcha. Now, however, it appears this new policy also permits adherents of the Norse pagan faith, also known as heathens, to keep their beards. Unlike Sikhs, Norse pagans are not required to wear beards as part of their faith, but facial hair is apparently encouraged. A memo written by Commander Colonel Curtis... Oh, whatever. Begins with an S. In a, the 795th Military Police Battalion, soldier who reportedly made the request stated, I grant your accommodation subject to the standards and limitations described below. The memo, which has uh, been shared around Facebook but does not include the soldier's name, went on to say, in observance of your heathen North pagan faith, you may wear a beard in accommodation with the Army uniform grooming standards for soldiers with approved religious accommodations. So, so there are standards uh, that come along with allowing him to have the beard. Uh, apparently. 
Yeah. Now, the the picture that they have here is of a man with a rather full beard, like a mm-hmm. you could grab it and pull on it kind of beard. He's is this also the has, guy, or just some guy who has a beard. Like the the picture is it like a stock photo of a guy with a beard, or is it the man in question? It appears to be U.S. Army Special Forces soldiers, a soldier in Afghanistan, two thousand and two. Okay, so there's. Units in the army, I guess, that weren't enforcing the shaving standard previously. Gotcha. I was surprised to read in this article that the shaving standard was brought about because of chemical warfare in World War One. Really? So you can remember the uh, the guys in the Civil War. All of them had Van Dykes and big giant mustaches. Uh, Grant was known for having yeah, a full sure. beard. Right, good point. Yep. So there you have something in the mid-1860s. Somewhere between the 1860s and today, something happened. I can't remember military guys having beards. Eve, I can remember Smedley Butler was clean-shaven. So then again, he's Quaker, and they would probably be clean-shaven. So whatever. I think it's kind of interesting. Let's see, the military's prohibition of beards largely dates back to World War One and the introduction of chemical warfare. Soldiers were no longer permitted to wear beards because they got in the way of gas masks. This policy uh, has evolved over time. Some special operations soldiers who sense. served in the Middle East were allowed to grow beards in order to blend in with local populations. Mm-hmm. This guy with the uh, red beard is not going to blend in with any local population. Not everyone in the military is fond of the new policy towards beards. In January, Commander Sergeant Major John... Taxwell, the senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said he believed beards are a distraction and a gimmick. (laughs) Sounds like he can't grow one. Well, there's always somebody out there who doesn't like a a new policy Mm -hmm. every single time. Uh, And a sergeant major is going to be a guy who wants to see cleanliness among the enlisted, so I'm not surprised. If you have any thoughts on this, love to hear you. 855-450-3733. It's eight fifty five four fifty free, but I mean I can't even imagine that there are people out there that feel strongly about this. But I guess that sergeant guy or whatever is he thinks it's a bad idea. Yeah, I I think that there's a couple of things in this. This guy's got a funky religion, right? I mean, does he really believe? Hey, whatever, man. Whatever floats your boat. I understand, but does he really believe that these North gods, Norse gods, are true? Does he really believe that there's a serpent that circles the earth? Probably not. I don't know. How do you know? I mean, there's all kinds of religions out there. What what makes that any less believable than Christianity? Christianity doesn't propose there's a giant serpent circling the earth. There's been a lot of pretty bizarre stories in the Christian religion. I mean, there's like the whale that ate Jonah, right? Like, that's a pretty crazy story. The I'm sure that somebody has... 40 ex- days, uh, 40 nights flooding the earth. Uh, that's a pretty crazy story. You wish it was 40 days and 40 nights. It was a full year. Okay, a full year, whatever. Right. I would say that... I just know what they taught me in Sunday school when I grew up. I don't know about too many major religions, too much. I, I kind of know all I need to know. But Christianity does not propose that you can go check on one of its supernatural things. To go check on? What do you mean? Right. There isn't a giant angel standing in the harbor of Haifa, for instance. So do they believe that this serpent is visible? This giant serpent? I mean, it could be like an invisible serpent. Kind of like, you know, sky sky daddy god. I mean, Christians like to believe that God's in heaven watching them, right? So, like, what makes a giant serpent any different from that? I don't know. I, I, it's just hard for me to believe somebody's resurrecting this old religion and suddenly believes it. Like, you can act like you do, but I just don't think you do. Hmm. You know, you kind of have to grow up with it to believe it. What was the name of this religion? Does it have a name, the Thor religion? I I I missed it if you said it earlier. Uh, They aren't listing it here in the Business Insider, but it's uh, either known as Odinism or Ashatru. I've heard of Asatru. Asatru, fine. Asatru or whatever. Pardon me if I get it wrong. Uh, I I don't take it terribly seriously. If you want to carry around, like, little, wear a little hammer necklace just to sort of signify, hey, this is where my people are from and that kind of thing? Fine. I got no problems with that, but they don't really believe it, do they? 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. This is Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. 
You can dial in toll-free here and bring up whatever you want. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got the Discord on-air call-in line rooms over at discord.lrn.fm. And with you tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. Uh, We're going to get into your calls and thoughts on this question about freedom of religion in the military, basically. There's uh, apparently a man who has been granted the ability to keep a beard under whatever circumstances one is allowed to do that. Apparently, one of those circumstances is if you have a religion that demands that you have a beard. As I understand what you just told us about, Mark, uh, we can get a little deeper into that. And you can join us here as well. Plus, I want to make sure that you know about ForkFest. It's coming up June 13th through the 18th. We will be broadcasting live from the event. You can join other like-minded, liberty-oriented people. If you are not liberty-oriented, you don't belong at ForkFest. But if you do love freedom, then you're probably going to enjoy it because there's a bunch of people that are going to be attending this year. In fact, uh, I know Ernest Hancock from Declare Your Independence has cooked up a few t-shirts so this will be the first year that there is a fork fest t-shirt it's only year number three of this decentralized libertarian camping event whether you're a voluntarist an anarchist a liberty a liberty lover in general uh libertarian you'll probably have a good time at fork fest it's decentralized meaning there's nobody who is in charge so that means everybody is meaning you are in charge of your own experience do you just want to come hang out camp with other freedom-minded people or do you want to create something for those other campers to do with their time, like, you know, I don't know, you're musically in talent, musically oriented, talented, put on a musical performance. Maybe uh, you want to open a little restaurant or yeah, stand. Yeah, serve or some food. Uh, maybe you want to pro- po- a poker game together or something like that. Uh, there's already people who are planning to do some pretty cool stuff. Go learn more on the ForkFest forum, uh, the ForkFest chat room, which you can link to from the unofficial ForkFest website at ForkFest.party. And mark your calendar June 13th through the 18th this year for the third annual ForkFest. It's ForkFest.party. Let's go to Mark. He's on the line in Indianapolis listening to WIBC-FM. Hello, Mark. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Hey, what's on your mind tonight, Mark? Well, I got a question. How do you know who Smedley Butler was? How do I know? Yeah. I'm a Quaker. I heard you mention his... Okay. Well, he was he was a Marine, you know. Yes, that's right. Yeah. He was the most decorated, uh, so, uh, well, I don't know what terminology to use, so, Marine in U.S. history, but most decorated military member in U.S. history. He wrote this, a book or yeah. a pamphlet or whatever yeah. called War is a Racket. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, he had uh, he had two medals of honor, too, I believe. He would have had three that, if that. at the time they allowed officers to get medals of honor. At that moment in time, they only allowed enlisted men. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, I was just I, I was just going to say on the on I know I spent seven years in the Marine Corps, and the big thing about uh, the facial hair was the gas mask. It won't seal if you've got a beard, mm-hmm. right? And uh, and they won't either. I mean, I know that for a fact. I saw guys that had real heavy beards in there, and they <laughs> when we got gas, they you know if they if they didn't shave twice a day, they were going to get gas. <laughs> Damn. Even with their mask on. Yeah, I wonder. So many military guys. I see, I see a picture here from 2002. Some soldier out in Afghanistan, and he's got a full beard. I guess he's trying to, to blend in. Probably they're not dealing with a yeah. lot of gas out in Afghanistan, is just my guess. So he yeah, looks they, fine. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a thing – with Afghani men too, they all have beards, so it's it is just kind of to blend in and to you know kind of do some of their customs, I guess. You know, yeah. Mark. Uh, anything else you want to share tonight? No, that's it. Thanks for calling. I appreciate hearing from you. That's Thanks, Mark and Andy. Guys. Yep, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So this guy I claims, don't know if they still do it, but the Marine Corps, every night in boot camp, they had to say goodnight to Smedley Butler. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting, considering that Smedley Butler became a critic of the military toward the end of his run. I don't right? know that he was a critic of the military. He was a more critic of how the military was being used by the government. So Has that changed? No. Then, I mean, that technically makes him a critic of the military, right? I guess. Yeah. I think that 
the people who people who are in the military have a distinction in their mind, right? They say, I sign up to protect the people of the United States. Mm-hmm. And then the government does with me as they will. I've si- signed a check to give my life over. Right, but they don't really protect the people of the United States. They're protecting the government. They're protecting the gang, the criminal gang known as the United States government. They work for liars and thieves. Right. No doubt. And Like who are they going to – if there actually was an invasion – and there's no real, I don't think, any legitimate concern that there would be because the United States Not tends to be pretty, invasion, no. pretty well armed. But if there actually was an invasion, would the military be tasked with protecting the politicians and the landmarks and the military bases uh, over your neighborhood? I suspect they'd roll a tank right over my house if it was. Uh, mm-hmm. they felt that it was militarily necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you might be right about that. So, no, I wouldn't think that they're trying to protect my house. Yeah, I don't believe the claims that they're there for... Uh, for our protection. I understand that's what they want you to think, but they're the government. <laughs> the government people tell you lies all the time. Let's not forget that the Supreme Court has ruled that the government has no obligation to protect you. That's true. So, And that includes the military. It taking on the role of protector, monopoly protector. We really well, don't... you can hire somebody else to protect you. You can hire you know, bodyguards. You still have to pay for the military, whether you think sure. that it's fi- an efficient form of protection or not. So... It it has many of the uh, many m- many of the features of a monopoly, if not entirely. You can have you can go get what, what do they call a ghost gunner, and yeah. you can carve M16s out of aluminum in your basement and have enough M16s lined up that you can put a militia together inside of a couple of months. I'm sure Those ghost gunners if, are pretty badass. If that's what you want to do, however, if you don't pay your income tax while you're doing that. You're liable to go to jail because, well, at least some point in the future. It won't be right away. It takes them a little while to get around to it. But some point or another, if you refuse to pay the income tax, you'll go. Let's go to Mac. He's in Indianapolis listening to WIBC-FM. Hey, Mac. How are you? Hey, what's on your mind? I uh, consider myself a practicing Odinist, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the the tenets of that spirituality that I think you're missing. Excellent, because Mark is a huge critic, as you heard earlier. I'm a critic of pretty much any religion. Go ahead. That's funny because you're a minister. The thing is, Odinism isn't a religion in that typical sense. An Odinist doesn't worship Thor. An Odin Mm. looks at Thor as a a Christian would look at a saint. Uh, An Odinist would look to Thor, Odin, Freya, Loki, Heimdall, whatever god or or, or deity would serve him to give him strength and to redefine his connection with the world. So it's not as based in mythology, a snake wrapped around the world. More, uh, Christians are more based in mythology with the resurrection and the Immaculate Conception and the burning bush than any Odinist is. Hmm. So what do you guys think about this uh, this serpent that's wrapped, wrapped around the world? What is that? Sounds symbolic uh, that, to that me. Is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mythology. It's, it, it, it's about uh, uh, Thor defeated this serpent uh-huh. when, when Ragnarok happened. It's a big mythology. Ragnarok's over? Right. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, uh, Ragnarok, I don't know what that is. I haven't read the comics. Okay, I don't know anything about this. It isn't the comics. Hang, hang on. I haven't <laughs> seen the movies. I haven't read the comics. I certainly haven't read anything yeah, else about Thor. So hold on, Mac. If you can hang on, I'm going to bring you back here, okay? okay? So stand by. More with Mac. He says he's an Odinist. This is Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has found that though U.S. financial institutions are prohibited from doing business with foreign gambling websites, it's not illegal for U.S.-based Internet users to gamble on those sites. People have been using VPNs or virtual private networks to connect to sites like games.bitcoin.com and play games with Bitcoin Cash. Games.bitcoin.com features poker, blackjack, roulette, craps, keno, slots, and dice. You can conduct your own investigation at games.bitcoin.com. Yeah, it's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free. You can take control of the airwaves here. Our number is 855-450-FREE, like freedom. We're talking about Odinism, which I know pretty much nothing about. I think a a long time ago we had a couple listeners who practiced Asatru, which is related, maybe? I I don't know. I'm pretty ignorant on this topic. Luckily, we've got a guy who says he's into this. Uh, on the line with us here, and he hung through the break. It's Ian and Mark in the studio with you. What brought all this up is a news story about a 
guy in the military, uh, the the Marines, I guess specifically, who's been granted. Nope. No, no? Sorry. I don't know that this guy's in the uh, this I apologize. Guy's army. Yeah, it was the other caller who brought up Marines. Yep. Um, anyway, guy in the the army who uh, is now going to be allowed to have a beard because he is an Odinist, because he believes in that religion and that requires one to have a beard, uh, even though that could put him in some jeopardy of dying from, uh, you know, gas inhalation or being severe, seriously harmed by that. Uh, but he's, I guess he's willing to take the risk, and I guess the, the military has to say okay in this uh, this particular case. So, I suppose anybody with a beard right now is taking the risk that they could be gassed. It looked, uh, it, you know, it also led to this conversation just sort of generally about Odinism, and Mark, you and I are, tend to be pretty ignorant on this subject, although you know more about some of its trappings uh, than I do. I've talked to a few people. Yeah, you mentioned there's a serpent that they believe that allegedly wraps around the earth. Um, and we have Mac back on the line with us here, listening to WIBC. And Mac, you were just, I think, Mark, you just asked him about that serpent. Is this, you know, something that the Odinists actually believe exists, or is it more of like a mythological tale uh, that, you know, doesn't... Tell me more about it. Oh, a lot of those things come from the original Nordic sagas. Uh, they were, they were, they were uh, stories and fables that, that carried spiritual messages. Okay, which mm-hmm. if you're if we're honest with ourselves, that's what the Bible is. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's not meant to be taken literally. Okay, and neither are the Nordic sagas, and they existed long before Stan Lee ever ever made them into a cartoon. That was uh, Jack Kirby. Okay. Well, whoever whoever started it, uh, the the sagas have ex- pre predate Christianity. Okay, and I don't think anybody that calls himself a Nor uh, uh, an Odinist or a practitioner of the Nordic old ways is required to wear a beard. I don't think that's that's really a. Is thing. it encouraged? If he does. Do you have a beard? I, I, I have I have a, a continually evolving beard. Yes, I do, but it's not based on, on my spirituality. I, I think if 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 that soldier, if he draws strength from that, and he draws himself to the to the, the warrior creed that is very very well represented in in the Odinist uh, uh, philosophies, why would you want to stop him from doing that? Why would I want to stop him? I don't know. Uh, I, I I only want him to do whatever his sergeant wants him to do. I don't really care. Um, the but you do care. You brought really up the story. Religion. What's that? This isn't a religion. It, it is it is a spiritual underpinning that people use to draw strength for their life. Okay. I don't think anybody worships Thor the way you said. I like that spiritual underpinning this... draws strength from their life. Uh, can you describe this strength drawing? Why does it happen? Well, uh, on the uh, on, on both solstices and equinox. Uh, my, my wife and my family, we will light candles to all of the four winds, the four directions, and we will reaffirm our connection with the earth and the cycle of life that we're all part of. And we will use Nordic deities, particular seasons uh, that are related to the particular seasons to, to, to foster that feeling of goodwill and, and carry it to, to, for the next three months until, until, we, uh, until, until we light the candles again. Hmm. It's just simple. Four times a year is a religious, uh, you know, ritual that i could get behind that's pretty simple it's not like every day five times a day it's just four times a year that's all you gotta do yeah and then we have a big meal and we drink some beer and 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 sweet you're giving beer to the kids why not yeah well well, you know they give wine to them at church yeah, I only got grape juice yeah. when I went to church. Well, that's because you went to the wrong yeah. church. <laughs> if you if they really believed in the Bible, they would have given you wine. Yeah, it, it, in closing up here, just it, it don't yeah. don't think of it as, as a big serious religion that that, that has uh, serious tenets that are laid out that everybody understands. Because you can say have one person calls himself an Odinist and the next person they have a totally different commitment level and a totally mm. different. Uh, necessity for it in their life. Now, um, my understanding is that, that some of the practitioners of Odinism or Ashatru, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, are, let's say, fond of their own ethnicity. There's Have you found of any of this? Yeah. Well, it, it, it's based in very, uh, uh, in very Teutonic lands. OK, yep. so uh, people people have subverted all sorts of philosophies to their own point of view. And unfortunately, that has happened with Odinism, too. Mm. Now, is this the uh, I'm just looking at because, again, I know nothing at all. Looking at the Wikipedia article here on Odinism, it is called uh, heathenry. Is this the same thing or is it Germanic paganism? I think a, a better word than heathen would probably be pagan. Paganism. OK, well, they consider Can you tell me the difference between these two things. Well, in, in my in my 
point of view, to use the word heathen is to say that you have accepted the existence of, of a Christian God, but you're denying his, his power in your life. All right. A pagan wouldn't even accept the existence of a Christian God. That makes sense. Yeah, makes sense like, to me. Yeah, a heathen is just not following the rules. A pagan doesn't recognize the How'd rules. How'd you get into this? Good question. What made you decide yeah. to, I don't know, get into this? Uh, just, just my heritage. Uh, I, I'm Scotch Irish, uh, and and the, 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 the there's there are no Irishmen that don't have Northern blood in them, you know. And it just it just it just comfortable for me, you know. I was my parents were uh, Roman Catholics, and that's always felt dark and scary and 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 inaccessible. And this is of me. It's this of is more empowering. Of, of this is something design. that this is something that you know resonated with you when you heard about it. But how how did you find it? it? Like good. what? It feels good. It, what I mean, what is it? What, what led you to it? Um, yeah, I, I'd be hard to say. I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I found a book. You okay. know, uh, the rights Sometimes, of Odin. What was it? The rights of and Odin. The rights of Odin is the book, and, okay. I, and the, the guy, that author's name escapes me at the moment. But it, it it goes through all kinds of seasonal ceremonies, and these are all just you know family get-togethers and potlucks with candles. Is all this is. Interesting. So anybody that's hate that, that that's backs this up with hate or violence, they're doing it wrong, you know. So why the Irish? Is it just because we don't know very much about Irish gods uh, that we really we've got a lot of of uh, documentation on the Norse gods? We don't have a lot on the Irish gods. Is it that reason? Well, and there aren't the the, the Norse gods were, were, were held sway over all of Eastern Europe. Uh, through through lots of Celtic people, not just in the Scandinavian countries, and certainly the the Vikings and the Scandinavians were very nomadic and and aggressive, and you know there's lots of Nordic blood there in Ireland on the English but, Isles. Let's okay? not forget that now, Charlemagne stirred them up. They really didn't do anything before Charlemagne came along and sort of wiped them out because they wouldn't convert to Christianity, and then their northern brethren came down and like, so you got a problem with us? And that's yeah. kind of what started the Vikings in the first place. Yeah, and a lot of the you know your tenets of Christianity have been have been uh, lifted directly from from the old ways. Hmm. Yeah, I think that modern you know, ones. There was uh, you know Clovis and these sorts of people. Uh, their their conversion to Christianity required a certain amount of taking the war warlike spirit that the the North people had and incorporating it into Christianity. Prior to that, you really didn't see as much of it. It wasn't until uh, one th- about 1000 AD that the the Christianity would even accept anybody being more or le- more or less a soldier and and being a believer at the same time. Sure, and and you know you, you could look at Christmas itself, uh, Christmas Day. Uh, there's no there's no actual record of what time of year Jesus Christ was allegedly born, but there were pagan celebrations at that time of year. Yeah. Pagans would notice the uh, the solstice, the the, the change in, in the season uh, around the 23rd, right around solstice when it happens, and they would celebrate with decorating trees, yeah. exchanging gifts and feasting, and so a great way to usurp that religion and to get people uh, uh, converted to Christianity was to go ahead and pick up some of their, their, their uh, traditions. That's right, well. yeah, we've talked about that before, yeah. how the uh, the Christians just basically straight up lifted uh, a lot of their stuff right off of the uh, the pagans. Interesting call. I thank you for sharing yeah. tonight. Very informative, and uh, Mac, I appreciate your call and your time. Uh, so there you go, Mark. You you were asking. You, you thought nobody would believe in He said it wasn't really a religion or belief system or anything like that, and I'm fine with that. that it's a spiritual, uh, spiritual. practice yeah, where, spiritual from which he drives strength. Fine. Um, that sounds religious to me. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, 855 450 free. 855-450-3733. You can bring up whatever you want here. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up, the Satanists. It's Free Talk Live. You dial toll free. Take control of the airwaves here. Our number is 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. That's 855-450-3733. What are you giggling about? Somebody somebody has taken uh, your King Mark photograph on the Discord server and has added a hand-styled, like hand-drawn with a paint tool, a mustache, and, uh, and a goatee. I am dashing. I can see that. <laughs> you can see what's going on in our Discord server over at discord.lrn.fm. I think that has to do with your comments on uh, beards from earlier. Every now and then you're known to grow out your facial hair a little bit. Yeah, it's been a few During times. The time. Usually has to do with working outside. 
But I find just because my- it's cold. You mean right? Okay, it's a free muffler on your face, True. and it's less cumbersome than anything else that you can put across your face. So it's a utilitarian thing. I find it difficult to not pull on whatever. To fidget. Yeah, to fidget yeah. with it, and your your fingers dirtiest part of your body, mm-hmm. uh, second dirtiest, I suppose. And I've heard beards aren't known for being particularly clean either. Right, and so I don't want my hands touching something close to my mouth. That seems bad. Mm. Well, you can join us here, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind, whether it's talking about uh, Odinism, which we just actually had an Odinist uh, on the line with us, and uh, he used he did, preferred to not use the term heathen, uh, but preferred pagan, and it is a pagan religion. Now, one of the things we didn't get into was, well, you know, what's the difference between Odinism and other pagan religions? How many different pagan religions are there i honestly don't know a whole lot about it i mean we know that they exist we've talked about we've talked to some pagans over the years uh here on free talk live kind of about their holidays and and some of their rituals uh but still mark you and i are pretty ignorant when it comes to this subject so it was really enlightening uh, an interesting conversation you can of course bring up whatever you want uh on the way here we're uh, talking about the satanic temple next that's coming up where the irs has apparently recognized them as a church And since you were talking about the military, Mark, I've got a military-related story as well about them turning towards video gamers as potential recruits. So we can get into all that and more, but let's go first to your phone calls and thoughts. We have Patrick on the line in Norfolk, Virginia, listening to WNIS. Hello, Patrick. Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. What's on your mind tonight? Oh, well, I called before. I was uh, kind of, I'm from the West Coast, so I was kind of uh, trying to find out if there's still active volcanoes on the uh, Cascade. I think it's the Cascade Range. Do you have the internet? Washington. No, no. No, okay. I, 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 have you I noticed this, Mark, that people, <laughs> people without the internet have, have uh, some of them use us as like their Google search? <laughs> like to call Free Talk Live and ask a <laughs> ask a question because they don't have any way of really you don't have any internet. No, no, wow. no. Have you ever local local library? But Jeez. I mean, no, no. Yeah, I, I don't I, the honestly, I don't, I don't know anything about too much. which volcanoes are active or not active. Um, I imagine somebody could look that information up. With it a says here, search. March 22, uh, that active volcanoes dominate skyline of Pacific Northwest and has lots of little hot red triangles <laughs> next to it. So uh, anything could happen here. At, I don't uh, think you should Fort worry, though, if you're Hood, in Ver- Norfolk. Is there, a, vol- is there a volcano in Norfolk? No, but I got family back there. That's where I was wondering. Well, if you're living near an active volcano, they should probably move out of there. Thanks for the call tonight. <laughs> well, I mean, active, that's it, it, it's more of a term that surrounds like a thousand-year period than anything. Yeah, that's true. It's not necessarily billowing smoke. That doesn't mean that it's it's active. Yeah. No. Um, either I way. I did see one in Hawaii, and then yeah. a couple of, a few, you know, a couple months later, it was uh, spewing some lava out, so... Yeah. Hey, if you want to build your house within active volcano range, you're taking a risk. If you want to build a house right on the the ocean, you're taking a risk. You know, there's, a bigger one, I'd say. Yeah, there's all kinds of you know very dangerous places to put a home, and I would recommend that you know if you want a safer spot, move inland and move away from the volcano. Of course, there's no no guarantees. Then a tornado could touch down and. Just destroy you at that point. There's always that. Uh, yeah, so you can bring up whatever you want here. The Army turning to video gamers for new recruits. This story from CBSNews.com. And uh, fairly recent, the Army missed its recruiting goal. This is what I mentioned earlier. They missed their recruiting goal uh, for the first time since 2005, which they blamed on a strong economy. I guess that means that the translation there is if people have something going on in their life that's like you know worth doing, They'll do that over join the military. Seems like a good plan. I think a lot of people who are looking for a little direction mm-hmm. are, you know, go to the military. That's Yeah, that's they got part. nothing better to do. They're lost in life. They want to be told how to live and what to do. I was ready to sign up. Uh, so was I when I was a punk-ass teenager. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I... Why does that, that make you glad? I, I don't think that anybody should Why does that have... make you glad that I was, you know, a young dupe and uh, brought in by uh, militaristic movies and things like that into thinking the military was cool and uh, that I could get free rent or all these perks and bennies and have uh, have at it with the uh, international conflict? 
the Hollywood actually does have deals with the U.S. military in order to, you know, sort of make military look good. You're going to get in trouble. Sure do. Your studio is going to get in trouble if you make sort of anti-military movies. That's right. You, at the very least, are not going to get funding from them. Well, you certainly won't get to borrow an M16. Or, well, right. They have private people that can sell those things I really to meant you. to say F-16, but I guess they both worked. So One's a little more common than the other. Yeah. You can you probably get an M-16 at the Hollywood uh, like an rental place or like something. That, yeah. But an F-16 gets a little more difficult. They might have a paper mache one you could sit in and look like you're in it. Well, I mean, there's computer graphics. You could probably... You could probably have a fake F-16. Pretty quickly, it's not going to make a difference, right? Yeah, these days. But either way, you're correct. The military does have an approval process for movie scripts, and they will, if they don't like your script, they'll tell you what to change if you want to get the funding. So I'm not sure where you're going with that, but let's no, go I'm on. just saying that young people, uh, young people tend to, uh, that don't have any place to go necessarily, tend to end up in the military, and it can be a pretty good choice for them. I think in a lot of cases that young people, they don't know what they're signing up for, and they And they've been up, lied to in a lot of cases. Well, what sort of lies are we talking about? Our military recruiters are notorious for telling lies about, like, what job you'll have if you sign up. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, you just, you want to be over in the communications division. Oh, yeah, no problem. We'll get you a job over there. You'll be working with radios all day, son. And if then you, you end up in the, you know, the infantry. Sleeping in the rain. If you... You can sign a contract that says you will go to a certain spot. Oh, That's is that right? possible. It's just that they don't want to sign you up that way, and they're not mm-hmm. going to make it easy for you. So if you sign a contract that says, number one, I'd like to go to communications, number two, I'd like to play of the French horn in the military band, and number three, I'll sleep outside in the rain with the infantry guys, then if they don't have room in the communications or the French horn division, then you're outside sleeping in the rain. You signed hmm. the contract. Hmm. Should young people sign contracts without looking, without paying attention? Well, four years, you'll figure out what you you signed, I guess. You'll figure out that your word has meaning. Yeah, well, we've heard from plenty of people who have been in the military and felt like they got taken by these recruiters. I Straight I, up lied to. I hear that, but I think that young people are getting taken far more seriously by the college apparatus these days. Okay. At least they don't end up getting shot to death by the college. It's rare that Although, you're going to get shot to death in the military. Not yeah. to say it couldn't happen. And certainly the military doesn't take your body you and your health You get shot by your own well. guys. It, it happens. Blown up by an IED. I mean, you're right, Mark, that uh, deaths are not as common in the military these days. At least the ones excluding suicides, because those are more common, I think, now than they have been in the past. Yeah, military but suicides are combat very high. deaths are, are lower than they were in, say, Vietnam. or College suicides are probably pretty high, too. Yeah, I knew somebody uh, who I went to high school with who killed himself uh, in college. People with debt and suicide, that's that correlates. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm not saying I support the co- college I'm, debt. That's all I'm like saying that. is is that yeah. kids today are given really crappy choices, and the military is only one of those choices, and it can be used to benefit yourself. I don't think that anybody should ever forget that politicians, at their own whims, will send young people off to die over wars that are really about mineral rights and a variety of other things. Or political wrangling control. They won't tell us what it's about or why they want it, but they'll do it, sure. Well, the U.S. military, the Army specifically, has what they're calling a new target, video gamers. Now, I don't agree with the article in this case. Because the military has been targeting gamers for at least a decade, maybe longer than that. Uh, They've had a a U.S. Army game that has existed since I think I lived in Florida. So I think it's been like 13, 15 years since they had this game. I can look it up and find out more about that. But they're putting together an eSports team. So they are kind of moving into at least a new new area of gaming to try to recruit. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. If you want to join us, you can take control of the airwaves. That's what we do here on Free Talk Live. Open phones. You can uh, bring up anything. Also, coming up, the Satanic Temple. Back in the news with the IRS apparently acknowledging them as a religion. This is Free Talk Live. Hour 2 is next. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. AgoristHosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar. And their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. 
And some people will try dirty tricks to silence your voice. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, you cannot tolerate any skullduggery. So go with agoristhosting.com. Have a WordPress or blog site, but you're not satisfied with performance or uptime? Or just want raw hosting? Want to pay with Bitcoin? Agris Hosting specializes in high-performance hosting with personalized service. Go to agoristhosting.com and click on the button that says Get Hosted. That's agoristhosting.com. Hey, it's Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the second hour of this live Saturday edition of the show with you in the studio tonight. It's Ian. And Mark. And you can join us online. Just drop on over to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features you will find there on the site. They're totally free. Uh, Unlike a lot of those talk show hosts in the business, they charge you for their websites. We do it free, and you get all pretty much everything they got on those websites they charge you for, like a webcam and... Uh, various different ways to interact with the audience and such over at freetalklive.com. As we continue here, we've been talking about uh, kind of uh, the military. There was a story about a guy with a beard who's been approved uh, to continue having a beard uh, in the military. and uh, Because of his religion. Because of his religion, uh, Odinism or Asatru or heathenism or paganism, whichever you know, you want to call it. So we learned a little bit about that. And that has led to a further discussion on the military, specifically their recruiting goals. The Army uh, has missed its recruiting goal for the first time since 2005. And now they're turning towards video gamers as uh, a target for potential recruiting. We'll tell you more about that. Of course, you're welcome to bring up whatever's on your mind. Let's go first to your calls and thoughts. It's David listening in New Mexico to KABQ in Albuquerque. Go ahead, David. Yeah, how this uh, this uh, politician stuff goes down. But did, I missed uh, something you said. Did Mark? Were you saying it that it was or was not Odinism was was or was not a uh, religion? Well, the gentleman had called in and said that at least his understanding of of the practice was that it was more of a spiritual empowerment system than a religion. I, yeah, I would say both are true. I would say that it's uh, that it's both what he said and and seen as a religion in the in the old days. I mean, sure. still seen as one. Spiritual empowerment sounds one. like a synonym for religion for somebody who doesn't like the word religion. That's what that sounds like to me. I think right. you have to yeah. kind of believe it. it. So religion, I don't think every religion necessarily believes in people dancing around in the sky, but most of them do. So you kind of have to have that. Not have, have yeah. to have what? Well, just... Magic beings. In, in... In casual conversations with people that I know in Norway and Sweden, it, it appears that they view Odinism as a religion, not that they necessarily practice it today. Some do, some don't, but they, I, the way they speak of it, they speak of it as a religion. Uh, but any, anyway, I uh, had an interesting uh, encounter uh, on the radio calling in. Their local radio station had a politician, this Gavin Clarkson. He's run for different things here in New Mexico. He was a in the Fed. He was a held a federal position in one of the presidential administrations. I don't remember which one it is. If the person was interested, obviously, you can search it real quick. And he, uh, 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 ironic or coincidentally, he happened to be the guy. He was in Washington, D.C. You discussed this the other day about people not knowing that New Mexico is part of the United States. He was the guy in Washington, D.C. that um, uh, was in there with his wife getting a, applying to get a marriage license and, and that kind of thing. And and he presented his ID. The woman asked for his ID. He gave her a New Mexico driver's license. And she said, uh, oh, sorry, we can't take this because they needed one from the United States. And, and uh, <laughs> This happens to people from New Mexico so, all the time. Really? Yeah. 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 All the time. And, and this guy happened to be a government, you know, government official when he's in there uh, getting his uh, his uh, marriage license. So, hmm. so she go, the, the government worker in D.C. takes his license back to her supervisor and they come, they come back a few minutes later and decide that, oh, they, they, after, they can't after all give him a marriage license because New Mexico is indeed uh, part of the U.S. That's a, wow. that's a relief. Yeah. Thanks for checking that out, lady. <laughs> yeah, really. 
And um, so this dude, this dude, I talked to him, I qu- asked him a question on the radio, and, and his answer is, is telling of what we got going down here in the United States. But this guy's background, he was a Harvard, he went to Harvard Law, and he's currently a professor at uh, the New Mexico State in Las Cruces, and he's run for a political office previously, and now he wants to be my senator. Oh, and so God. They, so, so he's an attorney man. and an academic? Yeah, yeah. So that should tell you. But he masquerade he masquerades, and this guy once again, Gavin Clarkson, you know, because this will get back to him. Hey, Gavin, how you doing? You're the one that dodged my question or that told me I was wrong, and let me tell you how you were wrong, Gavin. But anyway, so he's on the radio because he wants to be my senator, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I, by by being an ass, I managed to get myself on the radio station that has banned me by by being a total ass. And, and now wait a minute, away. there's more than one radio station that's banned you. Is this the one that called the cops on you and had you arrested, or just one of the ones that's banned you? This this one only reported me to the cops, and the cops didn't re- do anything about it. They, they, it's this, this one's KKOB, the commercial uh, radio station. Okay. They, they've called the cops, but the cops won't do anything about it. Whereas KUNM having their own police force because they're the University of New Mexico, mm-hmm. and they have their, their own police force. Yeah, their police actually responded, and uh, and we're currently in court about it, and they want to put me in jail for 364 days for. Okay. For insisting I have a right to, to call So the you got past station. the phone screener. At Gavin Clarkson should do a little time in uh, jail just for this necktie thing that he's wearing. He's got one of those bolos uh, where a bolo, yeah. a, a bolo. It's a it, it's like a necktie, but look it up. Western. It's like these two pieces of rope with a little medallion in the middle. Oh and you sort of, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen those. Yeah. They're awful. Well, That's like a well, totally hey, he, Western he, he, thing. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It's no? like a, yeah. it's, it's like a 1960s Western thing. Yeah. Right. Well, he is, he is from New Mexico. He, his, both of his parents, he claims both of his parents are uh, tribal members here in New Mexico. And he is the, what, a, what was it, 2012 uh, Country Western Dance Champion. So what is it about this guy? I mean, you know, he said, you said he wanted him to, uh, or he wants to rule over you as a senator. So, like, what did you confront him with? What, where are you going with this? What I, confront, what I confronted him with is, is I wanted to uh, uh, discuss with him uh, the issue of uh, parents and children's rights, and there, for instance, there happened. To, well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I wanted to discuss that, and he shut me down immediately. Of course, you asked the question, and instead of having a discussion, they immediately cut me off oh, and let typical. him say whatever he wants to. Yeah, yeah. that's typical what, talk radio. What, right, and what they did is when they cut me off, what his response was, Gavin Clarkson, the Harvard lawyer, New Mexico professor. What his response was is that um, my question was invalid to his office because. The issue of parent parental rights is uh, a, a local issue, was his words, not a federal issue. And I can prove that wrong, Gavin Clarkson, on many different levels. Let me just share one, yeah, one. with you. For, for the last decade or more, there has been submitted uh, to the, um, the, um, uh, the House on a continuing basis an attempt to uh, pass a Parental Rights Act. Which would give, which would specify what more clearly what rights parents have regarding their children, so that less is left up to the courts to screw mm. with parents over. And by by the by, by definition, if this act is a valid act that has been submitted over and over and over again by a half a dozen or more different uh, congressional sponsors, that by definition, Mr. Harvard gra- lawyer, graduate professor, that by definition proves. That is a federal issue. Otherwise, it would not be be before our federal legislature. Right. At the very least, least, he should be able to answer the question about whether or not he would support such legislation. But obviously, he didn't want to even have any kind of conversation with you. Thank you for the call tonight, David. I appreciate it. It it, It seems reasonable that rights should – among them, your sort of parental rights should be enumerated. Why wouldn't we have that in the Constitution too? The 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 writers of the of the Bill of Rights were pretty clear that the rights that they were enumerating weren't weren't the all only of them. rights. Yeah, it was just some of them. So as we go on and we determine more rights as time goes by, we probably should add them. And hmm. it seems to me if you've parented a child and certainly if you have to pay for one that you've got certain rights. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's one of the things that frustrated me about talk radio because you could hear that happen. I could hear that happening to listener or to callers on most talk shows was they'd get one line out. They'd say whatever, you know, initial thing they were going to say or ask a, ask a question and then get cut off, obviously, because whenever I was listening to talk radio, it was like, what happened to that caller? 
They didn't say goodbye to him. There, you know, there's no further interaction with the, with the callers. They just they were on for a moment, then they were gone, and then the the host just yaks and yaks and yaks. And this is one of the reasons why I founded Free Talk Live was because I wanted callers to be able to actually have the opportunity to express whatever it was that they were actually calling about, or you know, at the very least, respond uh, to the person they were talking to. Well, when you have a guest on, though, you want to give more time to the guest, and the callers yeah, can that's true. often callers can filibuster in yeah. the question. They wander around. They're not professional questions. Question True. askers. That's a good point. I think it's best if, as a caller, when you're dealing with an interviewee, that you spit it right out, and that's about it. But, but even when it's without a, politician, a guest, they do the same thing. They do the same politician, thing. They claim to, to represent you. I think it's a bit different. Yeah. There's more coming up here. Uh, this is Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. You may dial toll free here and bring in whatever is on your mind. Our number is 855 450 free. Coming up, the Satanic Temple back in the news. And uh, apparently approved by the IRS as a religion. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. Um, Also, I want to let you know about Bitcoin.com, your premier source for everything Bitcoin Cash related. Bitcoin.com can help you choose a Bitcoin Cash wallet, buy Bitcoin Cash, and show you where you can spend your Bitcoin Cash. You can read the latest news headlines or engage with the community on their forum over at Bitcoin.com. Plus, they also have games that you can play with bitcoin cash at bitcoin.com as we continue here speaking of games the uh the u.s army is now targeting gamers well the way this story is written they make it sound like this is a new strategy it's not uh it's something they've been doing for a number of years in fact the game that uh, they came out with i remember i think it was back when i was living in florida so probably at least 15 years ago uh was called america's army and it was a god awful game. Now I don't know if it's been improved since then, and you know various different updates and such. Yeah, it looks like 2002 uh, was when they it got came the budget out. to update it. Yep, they sure do. So it looks like yeah, they've updated it a few times over the years. But it was just you know as far as games go, terrible. Now I, I guess it's supposed to be kind of realistic or supposedly, uh, but that's actually not what this story is about. This is about them targeting gamers. At esports gaming competitions, I guess they're not conferences; they're competitions where people come to a room and sit in, you know, chairs and play video games while a crowd actually watches them. Apparently, and they call it a sport. Yeah, um, it's an amazing thing, and I've never actually witnessed it, nor am I interested in, uh, in witnessing it. And and I'm a, I like video games, you know. Yeah. I, I uh, I grew up on them. I grew up in the '80s and '90s, so I was there for the, you know, the the true time, the the, the original years of the video game business. Yeah, I and I, I I balk at the notion of calling it a sport. I think that's ridiculous, personally. Yeah, but there are think there are sports out there. Let's let's take bowling for instance. Mm-hmm. That's on TV. It's they've been playing bowling and calling it a sport since I was a kid. There is something physical involved in bowling. You have to be able to lift a ball. Yeah. You have to be able to swing it. swing it and aim it. But you have to be able to pick up a controller and use it. Which is even less of uh, physical effort. I mean, there's not much involved in that. Well, sometimes, sometimes you have to lean to one side or the other in order to uh, get the, <laughs> the player on the screen to do exactly what you want. Well, they actually do have those kind of controls these days, Mark, but uh, I know what you're referring to. Yeah, I'm where, talking about the video gamer lean. Yeah, the old the old school lean where they didn't have motion detection or anything like that, and you're yeah. just t- like you're dodging the enemy or whatever it is. Right. The game system has no idea you're doing that. Of course, nowadays they have all kinds of sensors where, you know, you don't even need a game pad anymore where there's, you know, uh, cameras that track your every motion. I do look forward to the role-playing games where you're – you know, out there slashing with a you know sort of fake sword in your hand and, uh-huh. and uh, killing dragons or whatever it is you're doing. Yeah, you'll actually get tired in those games, from what I understand. They actually have games that I are, might be ready to call that a sport. If it were competitive, then I guess maybe you could argue about that. Um, the, these new virtual reality games, Mark. I don't know if you've tried virtual reality yet. I've but, put on. I put my cell phone up to my no. eyes in a. Gizmo. Yeah, we did that a few year, couple of years, a few years ago. Here we had like the Google, what was it, cardboard? I yeah, think it was. It was. Like, it was somebody sent us a cardboard thing, and we yeah, you fold it up and downloaded can, the app, and and it's a, that was a cool gimmick, you know. It's like, oh, this is kind of what VR is like, kind of. Yeah. But then you try out like the Oculus Rift, 
and uh, ooh, Superior. boy, it is something else. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty persuasive, and it's just Generation One. I, I was watching, um, let's see, some sort of video game review of the new. Uh, they got a new, of course, they got a new version, right? The, the Oculus is coming out with a new one, and uh, this one is going to be a self-contained unit, wherein the previous. Gen- the first generation of the the virtual reality hardware, and when I say first, I mean recent times. I'm not talking about the 90s VR. Okay, we're talking about recent years. Uh, the first generation of uh, recent VR, they had these big ca- like a cable pack that comes off of the helmet, uh-huh. and then that has to plug into a pretty ballsy computer. Like you got to have a you know yeah, killer render- graphics. You're doing a card. lot of rendering. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, right. Because you got to render for each eye. So you've got two different screens that are being rendered instead of your normal one that you'd be looking at on your computer. So right. your, your graphics card's got to be a beast. Your computer's got to be a beast. And so and you're plugged in. So it's kind of awkward, right, to have cables coming off of you when you're, you're turning around and, and you're moving within a space. So they're getting rid of the cables and they're getting rid of the computer and they're just doing it as like a game system wow. that basically is on your head. So I several museums out there, including the Field Museum in Chicago and... The Museum of Natural History in New York, I have, in in the case of the Field Museum, I went through their virtual reality thing that they had. Oh, okay. And I think it was a... So that was pretty state-of-the-art, right? When What year was this? Uh, last, early, la- late last year. Okay. Probably pretty good then. Pretty impressive. It, well, it was... Impre- I mean, it wasn't hyper-realistic. Ah, uh, okay. But it was neat. My son... You know, you take him to the field museum and show him millions of year old dinosaur bones. He wants to get to the uh, the VR setup. Hell yeah! Whatever. <laughs> we'll look at dinosaur bo- dinosaur bones in VR. <laughs> right. That would be. That, that's the <laughs> then trick. you can touch them. Well, well, you can move them, sort right. of. And, and the same thing happened. As a matter of fact, he built a dinosaur skeleton in the uh, the Natural History Museum in New York. And both of these things are, you know, pretty cool setups. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's continue. We can talk more about the Army targeting gamers in the eSports world here in moments. We ended up going off on a tangent, but that happens on Free Talk Live. And open phones anytime, so we get, we love tangents uh, here on Free Talk Live. Let's go to Jeff. He's in Kentucky listening online. Go ahead, Jeff. Hello. I have something to add to uh, last night's discussion about how Facebook is banning accounts like Louis Farrakhan. Yep. Alex uh, Jones. Fan pages. Yeah. Yeah. And anybody who has fan pages, because I have personal experience. Tell me about what? What, what do you mean? Uh, Facebook. Well, back in February, I wasn't banned for life, but back in February, I was temporarily banned because I had nothing to do with hate speech, no cursing, no porn, but yet, mm-hmm. however. I have a major foot fetish, and, <laughs> and um, oh dear. So, so I just uh, I found uh, some pictures on another Facebook page, okay, uh, that I liked, and I just I put them on my Facebook page, and, and I these are just people's toes. It popped up. Well, I'm a soul man, and I'm not referring to the old 60s song. <laughs> so you're into the and soles of, of a foot, specifically. You have a very specific part of the foot that you're into. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a sucker for a woman's soul. Interesting. And this is all This is all the picture was. It was just a woman, totally clothed, except from her ankles to the soles of her feet. Yeah. And as soon as I put that picture on my account... Facebook made a something pop up saying that I was banned for so many days. No now, way. Is what is, <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. got it from I'm another Facebook it. page? Because this happened to us from one time. It didn't Facebook have anything to do with a foot fetish, but uh, it had to do with um, Bikini Girls, basically. We had the uh, the Gold Coast Meter we Maids. reporting on a news story. Right. The Gold Coast Meter Maids, which are you know a bunch of hotties that walk around and fill parking meters in Gold Coast, Australia, as a you know customer service. It's amazing stuff. And we were talking about that, so we linked to their Facebook page. We got banned for that. And we got banned for that, temporary ban. Uh, So we'll come back with uh, Jeff, the soul man. (laughs) It's free time. Business owners, you want more customers? Accept cryptocurrencies. There's people all around you just waiting to spend money at your store. If only you would take it. I know, you've been waiting till someone else makes it easy. Well, good news. Help me take Bitcoin.com adds Bitcoin to your point of sale. Totally free. Use the same equipment you already have now with Bitcoin. And unlike credit cards, there's no fees. Let the guys at HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com 
bring new customers to your store. HelpMeTakeBitcoin.com It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. Whether it's military recruiting video gamers or foot fetishists, you know, we'll talk about anything. Now, to be clear, if it's uh, anything to do with sex, there's certain rules and restrictions that have to come into play. The federal government's FCC doesn't really care. I'm generally uh, not grateful to the federal government or the FCC for anything, but in this circumstance, I think I might be. We just have to, you know, be cautious with those conversations. And so far, our caller's been pretty uh, pretty well behaved on the, on the topic, just kind of generally talking about uh, you know, a foot fetish, getting him banned from Facebook. That was actually the purpose of his call. It was talking about Facebook targeting uh, people like Louis Farrakhan, Alex Jones, and others, labeling them as, quote, dangerous. I don't know if you heard about this, Mark, but uh, we covered it last night. I in, read this story. Yeah. In some detail on the show. Now, of course, you can join us online anytime you want. Go to freetalklive.com and online. Uh, every now and then we do after shows. So last night we did one of those after shows. Ended up going for four hours uh, after Free Talk Live. So we did three hours on the air. <laughs> this four is more the hours. problem with any live stream or podcast or anything like that. There's no particular time limit on these things. Well, I mean, you can set your own time limit if, if you want to. But if you're having fun and people are participating, then you know, we keep going sometimes. Uh, but we do those on our Live streaming platforms, the, the video live streaming platforms, Twitch and DLive. You can go to twitch.lrn.fm or dlive.lrn.fm and follow us on either of those platforms. Speaking of bans, we did catch a, a temporary ban on Twitch recently for so-called nudity on the Twitch stream, which, by the way, they've never answered my questions about. I sent them a, an email during the, uh, the purported ban or temporary ban. And asking questions about what they meant by nudity and does you know does nipple do male nipples count as nudity and I had a few few different related questions and they have not bothered answering my questions I guess they have no obligation uh, to provide me with any answers it's just like just keep stepping around there in the darkness and see what works and what you know what doesn't see what gets you banned and what doesn't and sometimes some surprising things will get you banned from some of these platforms we're going to continue and uh, we'll take your calls and thoughts but we still have Jeff on the line. In Kentucky, Jeff, you're back on Free Talk Live. Now, you said you posted a foot-related photograph uh, from another Facebook page. So the photo was already on Facebook. You've posted this to your personal page, your personal profile. and Got an immediate ban, which I have never heard of. Yeah. How long after the post were you banned? Uh, I was banned for 30 days. No, 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 no. How, how quickly, I mean, Mark said it was immediate, but was it, was it like a minute? Was it instantly? Was it an hour later? Was it the next morning? When Has did you, Facebook assigned a sensor right to you? Like, when did you notice the ban went into place after you made the post? I'm not kidding, guys. Only like 15 seconds at most. Wow. So the post, and, the post, did it successfully the post to the page or did it never even make it? It didn't even make it. They said that they're not going to show it. And this wow. is the really disturbing part because I was already familiar and heard a lot how Facebook doesn't respect our privacy. Nope, they sure and don't. Things like that. And uh, here's the disturbing part for me. Okay. I had my settings uh, set to where it would only post to only me. I chose really? that setting, only me. And it still somehow caught it. Even though you see a whole lot more at a public beach, this was just a woman's feet. Okay, okay. now but question I, yeah, about yeah. the content of because normally when somebody posts something to Facebook, if it's a photo, they'll usually post some sort of caption, some sort of text along with it. Was there something offensive, perhaps uh, some wording in the text that might have triggered uh, whatever auto filter that they got going on behind the scenes? Absolutely nothing. I put no text on it, and there was no text in the wow. picture. Wow, that's crazy. It was just nothing more. Yeah, and I, it's just like, what constitutes porn, like the problem you guys have with this other side? Was there a lot of skin in the is. photograph? Was like, if it, was it just somebody's foot, or you said they were, the person was clothed, right? So it wasn't like they were showing yeah, the a lot of skin. The woman was totally clothed. I mean, wearing, even to the point of wearing long pants. She was wearing jeans. Yeah, the only see, thing that was off was her shoes and socks. That's weird because I, I know how to describe this, but uh, but unbelievable. I, like yeah. it's just it it. I don't understand how this could have happened. 
and they don't give you an explanation. There was no citation of uh, nudity policy. Was there anything, uh, you know, the way they sp- got more specific? It just said something about their community standards. What is community standards about a relatively obscure fetish, just about feet, that we see every day? You see a whole lot more than that at the public beach. According to the story yeah. at uh, Vice.com entitled, This is Why Some People Are Turned On by Feet, written by a foot fetishist named Grant Stoddard, uh, he says there was a 2007 study published in the International Journal of Impotence Research found that among those professing to have a fetish, feet were the most common preferences for body parts. So I don't know if it's that uncommon. I mean, our a former co-host of ours was uh, was into feet, so maybe it's not that uncommon. But regardless of how common it is, it doesn't seem like it should in any way violate uh, a Facebook community guidelines policy if it wasn't showing any nudity and you weren't typing in really offensive things along with the uh, the caption as well. But, you know, we don't run the site. And they have whatever arbitrary, stupid rules they're going to have. I would recommend getting off of Facebook and finding somewhere else that's more respective of your particular belief systems and preferences. Uh, Jeff, thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Inter- interesting story. Uh, people have been getting banned left and right off of Facebook, and sometimes there's some reasons and uh, you know rationale that are given, and other times you know they don't owe you any, an explanation. It's their platform; they can do whatever they want with it. I think the best thing that um, a lot of people could get would be a 30-day ban off of Facebook. Just to give them a break, just to uh, you know, give them the incentive to figure out something else to do with their time? Sure. I think Facebook's good for, I don't know. For post- what? Posting a few pictures of your family so that your friends can see them and that kind okay, of thing. sure. Maybe exchanging some recipes. Yeah. That's about all I've got. <laughs> I think it's that's what it should be for. It should mm. be a sort of I think it's a great way to sort of make a chronicle of your life, diary, yeah. that kind of thing. Now, let's not forget that then Facebook can then mine for data and as, sell. as they do and the federal government they they're completely in bed with them and so you're giving all yeah. the information you possibly could to On the yourself. authorities. But yeah. you're creating your own profile for the federal government. <laughs> everybody wants it. Most people have thought to themselves, I should write a diary. Uh-huh. This is the closest that some and come to it. this is a great way to sort of figure out where you were, when you were, sometime in the past. If it was a little more searchable and usable, God, that'd be cool. garbage. You can't search crap on Facebook. It's useless. Uh, but I'm not going to rehash the things I said about it last night because I had a few things to say about Facebook. So if you missed that, you can go to our website at freetalklive.com. You can download previous episodes there that go all the way back to 2006. I'm sure all of them were smug and uh, just talking about how you've kicked the Facebook habit and everybody else should too. No, I mean, hey, if you like it, I no, no, what I said is if you like it, man, have a blast. It's just it doesn't do what it once did. It doesn't connect uh, effectively and it doesn't allow for organizing and it doesn't uh, effectively allow you to communicate the people that you you want to reach so they broke it and they broke it so on the the intention of you paying them to uh, reach the people you want they did do that that's the short version anyway the uh, international journal of impotence research according to the story here fully 47 percent of fetish groups subscribers in the sample the study looked at were into feet 47 percent of them that doesn't tell us how many of the masses like feet, of course, and foot-related things. But among the, quote, pervs of 2007, it was pretty big. Study's authors also mentioned Sigmund Freud noticed the frequent interest in feet and described it to the notion that feet are, well, your surprise, a penis symbol. That I've what? never heard. I have never heard that about uh, the foot before, and I can't even understand how that could be. Maybe well, that says more about Freud than it does anybody else. Hey, I get the impression <laughs> Freud called uh, lots of things phallic. <laughs> uh, he says, I chiefly credit my foot fetish, because this is a question I meant to ask the caller, but I forgot it. Like, how'd you get into it? Because I'm always interested to know, like, where, where'd that come from? He says, I credit my foot fetish to the events of an uncharacteristically long, hot English summer in my middle adolescence. Two other boys and I spent many summer days with three girls we knew from school. We sunbathed, hung out at a local swimming pool, went walking in the nearby woods, where the girls pluck daisies between their toes on more than one occasion. Well, there you go. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves. Uh, You can bring up whatever you want, and it's Free Talk Live.
Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Whoops. 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. You can. Professional broadcasters here. Yes, we're doing great tonight. Uh, Ian and Mark in the studio. We'll take your calls and thoughts about whatever you want. We were discussing briefly the U.S. military, specifically the Army, not meeting its recruiting goals. And turning towards video gamers in a new way, they're starting up their own e-sports team. And then that uh, led off into a different direction that then we had a caller who was talking about a foot fetish. And not knowing a whole lot about foot fetishes, I found myself curious. And, of course, Vice has an article that's all about it. Uh, written by a guy who has a foot fetish. He's talking about how, how he started. How does that, you know, how does that happen? Is it something you're born with, or are there circumstances that lead you or lead one towards that particular viewpoint or it, interest? I, I can see why they would have written the article, because I can imagine a lot of people would be sort of interested in this. Yeah, I, sure. Yeah, whatever. Well, they say that a, a fair amount of people who are fetishists are into feet. They, uh, there was so they a study. can't tell you what percentage of the population is a foot fetish. But what they can tell you is is that people who go to fetish websites, what percentage of them are foot fetishists? Yeah, of those professing to have a fetish, feet were the most common preference for body parts or features and objects usually associated with the body. So that doesn't mean it's the most popular of all fetishes. It just means that of body part related fetishes, feet are the, the clear winner. Yeah, I'm not sure that... There's if if I were to think of a fetish, I mm-hmm. wouldn't think of any other body part really being a fetish, right? There's, Besides feet, you mean? Right. So the there's a few body parts that are sort of just traditionally sexual. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. these are these are the parts you're supposed Female to like. Female breasts, but legs. That's one of them. Yeah. Yep. Um, butts and yep. things like that. So I'm not sure that would be called a fetish just because it's so ordinary. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, fetishes are normally out out of the ordinary, right? So. At that point, then... How about the curvature of the neck? Is that a... I don't think so. Finish? I think that's just something you're attracted to. Mm. So, Well, what's the difference between something you're attracted to and a fetish? I mean, a fetish because, is something you obsess over? Uh, foot and fetish are alliterative. That's the reason. Well, that's nice. It's handy. Uh, the toll-free number here, if you want to join us, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So I was reading the part of the story here where he explains... Where this, in his mind at least, came from. What was the origin of his uh, his interest in uh, or his fetish in feet? And he talks about when he was a child uh, in, in his middle adolescence with uh, other kids of his age. They were, you know, outdoors with uh, with one another and walking in the woods, girls barefoot. Uh, they were plucking daisies between their toes. And he says, despite lots of yearning from the boys, particularly me, the activity within our co-ed sextet remained entirely platonic. The most titillating thing that happened from my perspective, he says, was that the girl who I was interested in ended up leaving a pair of sneakers at my house. Her two friends had been razzing her about how stinky they'd gotten over the summer. Resigned to the fact that sniffing her well-ripened British nights would be as physically close as I ever got to her. So just out of of child desperation of wanting attention and all that, he says, I ended up huffing them whenever I was alone. Oh, dear. The effect it had on my person was so intense and profound that I feared that he was talking about how he was turned on, uh, that it would never subside. So apparently just the um, the interest in this young lady being able to see her toes and feet and then having access to an article of her clothing, specifically her shoes, uh, led him into this uh, this world. And then I guess he, the, she just left the, the shoes there. So he had them for some amount of time. So I have to sort of put aside my disgust with all of this. It's, yeah. And then realize. Feet are stinky. We're just animals. Yep. You know, I've got this uh, great dog that's staying with me. She's a St. Bernard. They sniff each other's butts. She is uh, what what I call a hot-nosed dog. She's. uh, What's that mean? What that means is they rely heavily on their nose. Usually I'm of the opinion that means they're good at it, good at using their nose. Mm-hmm. It could just mean that she's got droopy eyes and it's hard for she's her to blind. see. She's blind, yeah. Well, no, she's a St. Bernard, and so they're yeah. bred to have these kind of droopy eyes. I see. And it's going to be a little more difficult for them to see. And, uh, you know, she loves to smell things, all kinds of vile things. Uh, there was a dead frog in the in the driveway, and she wanted to smell it, and Lord knows what she intended to do with it if I left Pick her there long enough. <laughs> right? It's just gross. Gnaw on it. 
and we're bring it inside. The dogs don't really do that. It's more of a cat thing, right? Bringing a dead thing in indoors. Yeah, she probably would have tried to consume it quickly if mm-hmm. she, if she had gotten the opportunity because she could I, roll in it too. They like to roll in death. That I'm going to get her out of uh, out of the range of that thing pretty quickly. So. I, because I don't want that in my house. It's yeah. yuck. One time Jazzy rolled in some death, and it was it was just awful. It's hard to get rid of once it uh, once it, it takes hold. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as the skunk. Uh, the skunk was the worst. <laughs> yes. Anybody who's had a dog that's uh, had yeah. a little run-in with a skunk knows what you're talking yeah. about. It's not much fun at Poor all. Poor Jazzy. So we're not that far removed on a modern human, as we were described, sure. as 200,000 years old. Yeah, I mean, we're not that far removed and from the monkeys throwing poop at one another. The agrarian revolution is 10,000 years ago. So of, you know, one twentieth of the time that humans have, modern humans have roamed the earth, have we grown food and lived in a society and things like that. And I'm sure that whatever... That sexual practices, uh, normative sexual practices took a long time to get in place, even in agrarian societies. They didn't all just show up one day and say, this is, well, we're going to do monogamy, and uh, you're only allowed to talk about certain parts of it. Uh, that all that's all, that's all that's acceptable. I don't think that's probably what happened. So, I, I you know, I, I have to just kind of put these things aside and think to myself, all right, well, you, you do you, pal. Old man uh, J. Raul in our Twitch chat adds in that combined with the hormonal insanity of puberty, things can get weird quick. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, and then he adds that the author over at Vice.com adds this. He says, in my mind, the shoes were a sort of fetish inducing double whammy. There was the smell of her plus the idea that I was beneath her figuratively at her feet. So maybe kind of like a domination thing going on here. Uh, she came over to get them before school started, but in that week or week and a half that those kicks lived at my house, I acquired an enduring and expanding fetish now in its 27th year. What if he's contacted her? What, since then, to tell her thank you? Or, or, or whatever. Can you send me your old shoes for, <laughs> for, for old time's sake? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It does make you think a little bit more about the people that work in shoe stores, though, doesn't it? No. No? You don't want to think about that? I'm sure the people who work in shoe stores are just selling shoes, by and large. I'm sure that's true, by and large, but I bet you there's a few of them that are really into it. I'm sure they are. They probably have their preferences and find them on sale and all those sorts of things. Uh, yeah, so if you want to join us here, the uh, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This story goes on. I'm going to put it on our uh, uh, social media. So if you want to in, if you want to engage in this further and uh, in, investigate, it all out. investigate it further, then this is a good place to, to start. I'm not into it, but hey, man, whatever floats your boat, as long as it's consensual. So yeah, um, that's what libertarianism is. Libertarianism yeah. is it's just about whether or not it's consensual, and if it's not hurting anybody, and everybody's adult and consenting, then fine. The uh, you know, apparently it bugs some people on the like the the video streaming sites because the foot fetishes foot fetishists or people at least masquerading as them will come into chat rooms of women. And uh, you know, like the women streamers, yep. and ask them for to show their feet on the st- <laughs> on the stream. <laughs> and <laughs> s- I guess some of them will probably do it if the guy ponies up enough money. Sure, if any of you these know? streaming sites, you can put money, right? You can donate money right there as you're doing thing uh, as they're doing things. And- Tip.lrn.fm. Tip.lrn.fm. That's What's right. that allow you to do? Uh, you can use credit card or PayPal to throw a tip into the stream, and then uh, we'll see it. And there's like a message that you can include. So you could write something about your foot fetish or whatever. And then it appears on the screen. And if you tip over $4 worth, then a robot lady will read your message out over the, the stream. Like while we're talking, she'll just talk right over us. Uh, so you can get your message read kind of on the air. And then we'll acknowledge it, say thanks, and I'll hand out cash in the studio. We're coming up here. Hour three's next. It's Free Talk Live. 
Would you like to hang out with Penn Gillette? He's keynoting Freedom Fest this year. I, for one, am thrilled. Freedom Fest is the largest liberty-oriented gathering in the world. They take a Big Ten approach with libertarians, conservatives, liberals, anarchists, capitalists, and just open-minded people mingling together to hear real debates, share real solutions, and converse freely. This year's theme is the Wild West, a time of liberty and opportunity, or a time of anarchy and violence. Maybe both. Go to freedomfest.com slash FTL and get your tickets now. Now, freedomfest.com slash FTL. Not convinced yet? Hey, I understand. It's a high-end event. Even with coupon code FTL50. Sure, you're likely to receive investment advice that'll make that sum seem paltry. But I have something special for you. Go to freedomfest.com slash FTL and you'll get the five best speeches from last year for free. Call it a test drive. Do yourself a favor and go to freedomfest.com slash FTL. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. Use coupon code FTL50 for a discount. Hey, it is Free Talk Live. We are launching into the third hour of the program here. Our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE-LIKE-FREEDOM. That's 855-450-3733. I mentioned uh, the very end of the last hour that we have social media. I just didn't tell you which ones. <laughs> so all. you can go to, well, I don't think we have them all. There's probably a bunch of sites out there that we're not a part of. But uh, we do have uh, Twitter over at twitter.freetalklive.com. We have Mastodon, which is the decentralized Twitter, like a competitor to Twitter, and I like it a lot. You can go to toot.freetalklive.com to follow our toots there. And, We've got uh, a Facebook page, too. You just don't yeah, like I don't it. talk about that. Um, <laughs> and I don't post there either. So if no, you, you want to see the stuff that I talk about on the air, then you got to follow us on one of the other platforms. Yeah, it doesn't work to post our show prep on Facebook. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, you can post it there, but it's, nobody's going to see it, and it runs up our, uh, it, it runs down our view count because Facebook doesn't like you leaving Facebook, so they prefer memes and posts. Oh, uh, you mean posting links to other sites? Facebook gets like mad that. about that. Uh, they'll 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 bottom it even further, like put it down at the bottom of the pack, uh, make it so people don't see it uh, even more than any other posts right. that you make. So uh, so let's see. So there was uh, Twitter, tw- uh, twitter.freetalklive.com. There's Mastodon at toot.freetalklive.com. And Telegram at telegram.freetalklive.com. That's where the story is about the bearded man in the military and the foot fetishist guy from the last hour. Those are there waiting for you. And you can join us here at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the uh, let's see. We had the story about the Army going after video gamers, plus the Satanic Temple is now considered tax-exempt by the IRS. We can talk about all that, but let's go to your calls and thoughts first. First up, it's Rick, listening in Bowling Green to WKCT. Hello, Rick. Hey. Hey. I was I just I was on my way to the store to do a little shopping, and I had you guys on the radio, and I heard you talking about the agrarian society and, you know, the ages of humanity, and I think you referenced normal, normal sexual behavior or whatever yep. wasn't established until... Whatever, and it got me to thinking. You know, a lot of things in religion that are morally, you know, considered moral, were based on time-tested things like disease control. You know, like for example, some people don't eat pigs, and we now that have microscopes, we know there's trichinosis in pig meat that's more common than there is other meats. So the religions that didn't eat pigs is because they discovered that when they ate pigs, they got sick. Well, I'm not sure that that's the reason the Jews did it. The, they, the Jews weren't were pretty specific. It had to do with a hoof and not chewing its cud, a split huh. hoof and not chewing its cud. That may be the reason, What's but that's cud? not the reason they stated. it. Uh, so a cow will spit up its uh, grass that it's eaten so they can chew it again later. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a part well, of a process. That you talked about monogamy, and once again, monogamy is probably a good idea for just the simple – prevention of spread of communicable diseases yeah that's probably true um so you know when you find you know this free love stuff or whatever that's fine to each his own but one thing that i'm discovering in our society now is that it seems like the pendulum has swung so hard that you're just the biggest bigot in the world if you just you know a church uh, on facebook a church just stated that uh you know we believe in marriage between one man and one woman and all of a sudden the lgb community comes out and says they're the enemy 
And the church didn't say one word about the LGBT community. They just kind of stated their belief. And you would think in a free country you'd be allowed to do that. Well, first of all, it's not a free country. Um, and, but regardless, freedom of speech does mean that somebody has the freedom to attack your speech with more speech. I mean, that's that's not the same thing as actually being attacked, right? You know? I, I guess not, but I'm just saying— They didn't crack their kneecaps in. Come out, it's one thing to come out and attack uh, you know, people. It's another thing for one group of people to say, look, our rules for our church is this is what we believe in. If you choose to share those beliefs, you can join our church. If you don't share those beliefs, then— Find a church that you are, you know, more compatible with your belief system. I don't think that makes an enemy out of anybody. I would agree with you, but I can, uh, you know, like people constantly are using their platform to discuss uh, other people's platforms to discuss what it is that they think, right? Like that's that just seems to be the way it is now, and it's been that way most of my life. I don't know why, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of Jesse Jackson. Or something like that. Every time something was happening, Jesse Jackson rolls out and goes ahead and speaks for all black people. Well, that's ridiculous, but it's what was done. And you know, now pretty much if anybody says anything, any company says anything, for God's sake, now you can see why companies don't see try not to say anything at all. But if a company says something, everybody just jumps all over it and says their their piece about it too. And I guess I'm not surprised that people in the LGBT community, many of them probably kicked out of churches, uh, and you know they're pretty bitter about it, are going to jump in and have something to say. Probably the most adult thing to do in any uh, circumstance is just to say, well, so what? They've got an opinion, and I'm not going to comment. Somebody on the internet's wrong, so what? Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> no need to start a flame war over it, uh, although it can be tempting. Rick, uh, sorry, go ahead with your thoughts. Anything else you want to share? I was just saying sometimes it seems like the pendulum like swings dramatically to the opposite. When I try to have a, a reasonable or polite debate regarding, you know, freedom of, of belief, it automatically turns into, you know, you're, you're just a homophobe or whatever. You know, the minute you don't just totally 100% accept their position, you're a homophobe. And I, I guess, that attitude is making me more resistant to being sympathetic to their cause. A lot of people don't act. realize that. They mm. don't realize that some people will take the opposite position that they have, especially when you're forced. So, for instance, the regulations are now coming down from on high that you have to, if you've got a business, you've got to provide abortions, you've got to uh, you know, give insurance to the gay married couple, or whatever the situation is that may be contrary to your religion. I don't have to agree with your position. I just have to agree that you have a religion, and that's part of your religion. And your religion, uh, you know, doesn't have to be new. It doesn't have to be old in order to be a religion. You could have a brand new religion. You decided that says that uh, you could only wear uh, red shirts today. I don't care what it is. Uh, religion's basically a philosophy, usually not particularly cogent one, but whatever. And you should be able to have whatever philosophy, and you should be able to peacefully, uh, you know, choose not to participate in whatever it is that somebody has decided that they're going to use the government to make you participate in. And I, I'd say Christianity has been on the wrong side of that plenty of times throughout history, and now they're beginning to see what it's like. However, that doesn't mean that you, an individual, have ever done anything, and it's all about the individual. Individual rights have to do with an individual. It's not about the religion. Good call, Rick. Thanks for uh, making it. I had to put you on hold during that because there's some talk back coming from noisy your line. Stuff going a little on. noisy. Yeah. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Uh, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. I was kind of looking around because I'd seen some headlines about millennials or Gen Z and, and monogamy recently. Not that headlines really mean much of anything. And as it turns out, there are a few different types of headlines uh, when it comes to monogamy. Is monogamy the new sexual revolution for millennials? That's one of them from uh, the Daily Beast. I hear people just aren't having sex because of cell phones. There's definitely uh, less sex going on, less hanging out in real life going on when it comes to young people in the United States, also in Japan, as I understand it. And Some of these social media sites I'm on, they're constantly complaining about not being able to get into a relationship. Well, you're not going outside. <laughs> right. 
Uh, young Americans headline from YouGov.com. Young Americans are less wedded to monogamy than their elders. So, I don't know. I guess it just depends on who you talk to. You get wedded to monogamy when uh, the person that you want goes and have sex, has sex with other people. That's when you start getting wedded to monogamy. <laughs> Uh, so you can bring up whatever you want here. Take control of the airwaves at 855-450 free. We can talk about the Satanic Temple, the U.S. Army recruiting gamers. And, of course, you can bring up anything you want. To me, what I like about monogamy is, is that it's a commitment. You can say, look, we're getting together. We're going to start building a life together. Mm-hmm. We're going to start accumulating wealth. We're gonna, um, you're going to handle these jobs. I'm going to handle these jobs. We're going to have a division of labor. And it's pretty efficient. Speaking of uh, wealth, Gene the Christian Anarchist has tipped Four dollars and twenty cents into the tip.lrn.fm room. I also want to say that Thank if you, I had any, any other opinion about monogamy, my wife would beat me. And he said Ron Paul was right. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's right about, right about a lot that. of things. There's more on the way here. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You can bring up anything here. This is Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live, you're invited here to join us on the radio. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We do have the Discord on our call online line rooms over at discord.lrn.fm, and that's where you can call in to bring up whatever is on your mind here on the radio. Ian and Mark in the studio tonight. And actually in our DLive chat over at dlive.lrn.fm, The Remnant asks, if I get an Edge wallet, which is a cryptocurrency wallet that we highly recommend here on Free Talk Live, they're one of our sponsors, but I've used them for long before since they became a sponsor. Yep. He says, if I get an Edge wallet, will they ask KYC questions? Do you know what KYC is, Mark? Know your customer. And what does that mean? They want... In many cases, they want you to, uh, as a business, they want them to take... The, like, they being the government. Yeah, the government wants businesses to collect your name, social security number, uh, you know, blood type, whatever it is that they can get out of you, all yeah. the information they possibly can get if they're doing money transfers and that kind of thing, right? Yeah, KYC also co- usually is heard along with AML, which stands for anti-money laundering. So these are yeah. the requirements that the federal government goons... Uh, place upon various different financial businesses, so check cashing uh, places, you know, banks, you name it, credit card companies, but not Edge Wallet. Okay, so that was the question. Is Free Talk does, Live would likely never? Yeah, I can't imagine taking <laughs> their money that. if they were like that. Um, Edge Wallet is well. I'll say factual things about a product or an app, mm-hmm. but. To get me to recommend it. Yeah, it's not uh, going to be you know, an endorsement. I might say, this is a great wallet, except they participate in KYC, and it bothers yeah. me. I've never and, seen the way, that in a wallet. they don't have to. I've right. never seen that in a wallet. I don't know if it exists. Maybe there are some, but... You uh, would have to if you were uh, running a... Uh, what, what, like an exchange. Well, Coinbase, a wallet, what do they call that? Uh, custodial wallet. Where Coinbase or, or whatever other company takes care of your crypto right. for you. Right. When they're taking care of your crypto for you, then they have to do that. But when they're not, then they wouldn't have to do that. Right. So there, uh, there is no KYC with Edge Wallet. In fact, Edge Wallet's available on iOS and Android devices. Uh, new version actually just came right. out today. It, you always have control of your own money. They never have it. Secure your freedom with Edge Wallet. Go to edge.app or just jump, jump into your uh, App Store, Google, or Apple and grab Edge Wallet. You can hold and store and sell and trade and buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, BTC, Ethereum, Ethereum tokens, Monero, Bitcoin Cash, Ripple, Stellar, Dash, and many more. It's edge.app. And it looks like it's becoming a seller's market in crypto. So, What do you mean by that? That means the pricing's going up, more people are buying. Ah, yeah. It's been going up over the last three months. It's been very, very good. So go and learn more at edge.app as we go to your calls and thoughts. Stephen is on the line listening to WIBC-FM. Hello, Stephen in Indianapolis. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, I want to talk about the uh, enormous amounts of UFO sightings been going around recently. around The, the U.S. United what? States. UFOs. Oh, UFOs. UFO are they higher than normal? Uh, they've been going up since... Uh, Probably in the thousands, um, you know, I'm talking 
you know, daily. I've seen a couple Thousand just daily. driving, you know, going from A to B, and um, it's insane, man. And not have you a lot been of probed? People are talking about it. <laughs> huh? Have you been probed? No, I haven't. I haven't had a physical <laughs> encounter. So when you seen the, you know, what have you seen? Is it like something that's real far off in the distance, just like a flashing light, or have you seen something up yeah. close? Well, it's it's more like the same distance as if you're stargazing. The mm. far distance, like it, you see, it looks like a star out there, yeah. but it'll zip by real fast in the blink of an eye. And you feel like and, it's going uh, way faster than like an airplane could, or a meteor. Oh, absolutely! It's 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 as far as the stars are. Hmm. I mean, just looking up without a telescope, driving. When the when the sky's clear, no clouds mm-hmm. in the country. I mean, you you can see well, a lot. The, now, how do you know it's not a shooting star? Well, that's. I mean, I don't have I don't have you know proof that it's an alien or anything. Sure. But well, then that if it, if you had proof, it wouldn't be unidentified, right? It's an unidentified flying object. So yeah, that, that by yeah, definition that, means you don't know what it is. Right, but mm-hmm. uh, but what I'm saying is, you know, history has given us evidence, you know, Area 51, Project Blue Book, um, all the declassified government files that's on the UFO topic, I believe aliens have a bigger impact in humanity than people think. You think aliens are, like, uh, having some kind of control in, like, government or something? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Can you tell me about some of this control? You said you well, believe. it's pretty much about it's, – it's pretty much how we view – the Republican and Democratic Party, but they're they are like aliens, aliens, aren't they? Bad. Exactly, but they're just spaces. We don't really see the people that are or the beings that are really behind. Why don't we see them? Wait, are you saying that the on. the politicians are shape shifting uh, reptilian aliens? No, I'm not saying that. I'm no. saying they're the puppet. They're the face that we believe are in control. But they're being told what to do. So you think, hold on, you think the aliens actually are running the governments of the world? Yes. Oh, wow. Now, We've been here for thousands of years. We've been seated on this planet by what are called the Draco Reptilians. They come from the Draco constellation. Didn't I just ask him about yeah, that's that? Yeah, that's what you asked. Yeah. So um, the, do the politicians get to see these uh, lizard people? I don't believe um, very few of them probably do. Okay, so how do they control them? them? Just, they Good tell question. them what to do. Well, um, like, do they, they give them a them phone what? call? Do they call Trump on the Oval Office red line? Uh, do they, you know, talk to them in their brain, like through some sort of bone conduction technology? Like, how do they? They send emails. A lot of it. <laughs> a lot of it's telepathic. A lot of it's just thought to thought, holographic, popping up, popping in and out of dimensions. Um, so the politicians know. Proven. That, we, that they're being uh, that these because if somebody if if ideas were coming into my head words and ideas were coming into my head I might think I'm thinking. So mm. do the politicians thinking until you see them in person and they make themselves known to you and then you're like okay okay I thought you said they real. didn't come in person. I well, thought. generally they don't. I oh, said generally very few of them I see, have I see. seen them. But, now, how do you, you know, know all this? Not, I mean. Not. Yeah, how did, how did you get the inside scoop on what the uh, lizard people are doing to the politicians in Washington, D.C.? Uh, a lot of research, a lot of listening to people that study this topic. Like how, David how Icke? Could they, uh, how could they sp- for one of them. David Icke? A very good researcher. David Icke, I don't know. He, he's, he's pretty uh, celebrity. He I mean, how can they study? What can you research about this besides other people's bedtime stories? You can go with science and evidence. There's no evidence. What's the evidence? that we live in what's called different dimensions our reality is three dimensions that's true and there's certainly the possibility that there are some kind of beings out there that have extra dimensional abilities to warp in and out of space or whatever it is but it's interesting that this whole thing came out after the v for visitors uh, 80s tv show that had lizard people running the government um in many cases you'll that was find a good show i saw the remake i didn't see the yeah, original you'll find aliens like the grays coming out after in close encounters of the third kind mm-hmm. well, these things really just come from people yeah. watching tv shows right i don't think you can call it studying if you're just watching tv and listening to if coast aliens to coast. are here you don't have any idea who they are thank you for the call tonight Stephen. i appreciate it uh, but you know everybody's got to have a hobby 855 450 free that's 855-450-3733 this is free talk live 
Go to themorganreport.com and receive updates and insights you will not find anywhere else on the web. You will discover how to grow and protect your wealth under all market conditions. The Free Morgan Report provides interviews, webinars, question and answer sessions, plus mind-blowing videos. As David Morgan says, let my passion create your wealth. TheMorganReport.com. TheMorganReport.com. It's Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition of the show. You can dial in toll-free and bring up whatever you want. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We have the Discord on our call-in line rooms. In fact, we've got a couple of folks waiting there, so we're going to get to your calls there as well. Over at discord.lrn.fm. Jump into any one of those four rooms. They're right there at the top of our list of different chat rooms that you can interact with other Free Talk Live listeners 24-7 on our Discord server. It's discord.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live's heading out to Freedom Fest this July. You should come out and join us. It's the world's largest liberty-oriented gathering. This year's theme is the, the Wild West. Was it a time of liberty and opportunity or lawlessness and violence? Penn Jillette, Lenore Scanese, Candace Owens, John Mackey, Kevin O'Leary and Kevin Harrington of Shark Tank, Stephen Moore, Grover Norquist, big names, libertarians, conservatives, liberals, just people who are open-minded, mingling together and sharing ideas and real debates, real solutions, conversing freely. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. When is it? It's it's in July, right? Yeah, but I don't think you mentioned. I, I, I've... Uh... You know, it's not in my copy here what it is. I think that it's would be July. important information. Yeah, it's important information. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm sorry I didn't catch that up until now, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me go on here. You yeah, can sure. Go I'll ahead look, and it look up. that up. Yep. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. And you can get the five best speeches from last year for free if you go to that site, freedomfest.com slash FTL. Judge Napolitano, Alan Dershowitz, Charlie Kirk, Heather McDonald, John Mackey, all of them free. Figure out whether you want to go to this this great event. It is a great event. It's in Vegas. Be able to get some, sh- see some shows with the wife. Have a wonderful time. Freedomfest.com slash FTL. July 17th through the 20th. So now we know, and now you know, and you can make your plans. As we continue, we go to uh, Penguin on the line. He's calling from the free market. Penguin, you're on our Discord server at discord.lrn.fm. Go ahead. I sure am, and hopefully my audio is as great as always. On yes, the, it is on the Discord app. Thank you. Um, so I have a pretty serious call today. Um, okay, this is we're all ready. Sparked from a, uh, it was actually a, a, an hour long Fresh Air on, um, uh, program on NPR. I listened to about John Bolton, who's a truly uh, frightening, just absolutely. Just, Oh, well, I don't want to say any kind of, you know, diagnosis casually, but okay. But he's a truly frightening individual. He's a government the, goon, uh, right? He was for yeah under the George W. Bush administration. He was the appointed. And he's a heavy UN skeptic, but he was appointed as the ambassador to the UN, and now he is the national security advisor. But he's a lot more hmm. influential than a national security advisor um, typically is. He plays a pretty active role in policy. So um, what what they what really shocked me and made me want to call in on a, on specifically on Saturday night was just to get the information out there about a specific incident because you may know about this guy, you may hear about this guy. He was a Fox News contributor for a long time and that's why uh trump mm-hmm. picked him because he tends to pick his people off of fox news <laughs> um not even a joke i mean that's exactly what he does he actually All right. picks his his people under him under off of fox news when's judge napolitano um, gonna hit get get uh hit the limelight oh well i guess that's why everybody's been throwing his name around to be honest with you. exactly probably why and it's honestly a good chance if that if the track record um you know proves to predict the future but um in, in an incident with uh john bolton in the lead up to uh the iraq war which eventually did did actually occur but this is before that happened in that period of time between 9 11 and the iraq war when we when there was certainly the drumbeat to war um the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons under uh jose bustani who was the head of it uh he, he was um they were targeting saddam hussein and uh, Iraq to uh, get them to accede to the Chemical Weapons Treaty. The Chemical Weapons Treaty is a treaty that like uh, over 180 nations, virtually all nations on earth are party to. Hmm. They obviously, you know, prohibits the use of chemical weapons and opens you up to um, 
at any time inspections. And uh, with all this WMD talk, uh, Bustani and his organization were very close to being able to, um, to, to get, or I think maybe did get a commitment to, or even briefly an accession to the treaty um, by Iraq. And uh, the next thing he knows, and I have the uh, article here from The Intercept uh, by uh, Mehdi Hassan. I'm not sure if he was the guy on the uh, interview, but I think he may have been. Uh, well, actually, no, I'm not sure if he was, but this is from The Intercept anyway. And uh, next thing he knows, and he's, in, he's over there in, I think, the Netherlands. And next thing he has uh, John Bolton uh, sitting in front of him at his desk. And John Bolton says to him, um, let me scroll down here. And when are we talking about? Is this pr- uh, previous to the second Iraq uh, invasion? or what? Yes, what 2002. Here? And the Iraq okay. invasion was in 03. Okay, got it. Um, and so Bolton, then serving as the Undersecretary of, the, of State for Arms Control and International Security Affairs, arrived in person in front of the guy's desk and says, Cheney wants you out. We can't accept your management style. He said, you have 24 hours to leave the organization. And, if and he's – so just to be clear, he's talking to the guy who's trying to get countries to sign on to a treaty to stop using chemical weapons? Who's getting – yeah, who's getting Saddam Hussein to, to sign the treaty or has gotten a commitment or a signature. I'm not even entirely sure. Mm-hmm. But he goes on, you have 24 hours to leave the organization, and if you don't comply with this decision by Washington, we have ways to retaliate against you. There was a pause. And, and quote again – we know where your kids live. You wow. have two sons in New York. So, I mean, talk Jesus. about openly mafia goon that's in, in the government. Not that's even, horrifying. If, if not true. even like a, like a goon, a real goon. What's the source on this again? The Intercept, Mark. Oh, boy. Yeah, the Intercept. That's pretty uh, reliable. Yeah, they reporting. do pretty good journalism. Yeah, and this is Bustani uh, said that, and he didn't back down. Actually, so the, he actually they actually had to get him voted off the thing, but uh, voted off of voted off of the chairmanship or whatever the the role is in the. Uh, so he faced down the threats, is what you're saying. So they didn't end up killing his sons in New York, uh, as he suggested. He faced that down. Yep. Uh, okay. uh, so the quote here is, my family is aware of the situation, and we are prepared to live with the consequences wow. of my decision. That's amazing. Good for him. Yep. But yeah, I guess absolutely. the idea here is that Bolton did not want uh, any publicity around Saddam Hussein signing any such document because they wanted the ability to invade. It's, yeah, it's, they so wanted Colin, every excuse. This is when Colin Powell was going in front of the UN, you know, with the vials and all that, all mm-hmm. that jazz. Yellow cakes. So they couldn't have that. That they never found. The treaty, of course. Right. Wow. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing that tonight. Wanted Anything that else, there, yeah. uh, Penguin? It's horrifying. Yep. Thanks for the call tonight. Right. Appreciate hearing from you. That's Penguin there on our uh, Discord server. One of the uh, the bunch of folks that are hanging out there all the time talking about uh, uh, lots of different stuff. Check it out at discord.lrn.fm. As you we... can call in with a story, too. Yes, that's right. Just like Gene, the Christian anarchist, who is on a different Discord line, because we've got four of them there, so you can just load right up. We'll join you, and then you can get on the air with us. But he's got to turn his microphone on. Otherwise, we can't put him on the air, because that will absolutely prohibit your ability to talk on the radio. Gene going once. Gene going twice. All right, we'll continue here. I guess we're going to Sarah instead. Sarah, you're in New Mexico. Go ahead. You're on Free Talk Live. Oh, lucky for me. Uh, yes. The phone diff- um, um, difficulties, um, you know, malfunction is always a nice favor. <laughs> in this case. Anyways, uh, um, Or people that uh, use foul language, you know, they get cut off and I get to get my turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what were you calling about? Yes, I, I was. Um, I heard that uh, hundreds of uh, Russians are down in, in Venezuela. They're very much involved. Mm. That's what what I was uh, announced on the radio news, and I do believe it. But I'm thinking, um, involved as in like military, army, are they there too? Um, I know that they gave. Uh, I mean, they have uh, two uh, nuclear war jets that they brought in. But they're very much involved. That was, that was announced. So I do believe it. Venezuela has been relatively cozy with uh, Russia for many years in the Soviet Union before that. So I guess it doesn't surprise me. Well, but it's uh, it's going to come down to like a, a, like like a war, like confrontation, like a North Korea. Like Korean War. Oh, you That's think that the United States' out. involvement in Venezuela and then Russia's involvement and then we're going to have some kind of a, a proxy war? 
I mean, a chance it of that. sounds like it can happen. Sounds like it could happen. Yeah, I would say that's the case. Now, uh, there's actually news about this. I'm glad you called in, Sarah, and thank you for the call tonight. Trump apparently had an hour and a half long conversation with Putin about, at least among other things, Venezuela. And some people are mad about that. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We can tell you more about it on the way. You can bring up what you want. This is Free Talk Live. Oh, man. So much to talk about. So little time here. Uh, We had a bunch of things that we never got to tonight. And then Sarah called in with a really interesting uh, topic about uh, the Russians in Venezuela, allegedly. The news media, however, reporting that Donald Trump had a lengthy phone call with Vladimir Putin yesterday and urged uh, Vladimir Putin urged sanctions relief for North Korea and warned against interference in Venezuela, according to the Russian embassy. The call lasted for 1.5 hours, according to a post on the embassy's Facebook page. And the pair discussed a, quote, shared commitment to step up dialogue in various areas, including on issues of strategic stability. The spokesperson for the White House said the leader spoke for more than an hour. Trump tweeted about the chat for a second time on Saturday, that's today, saying there was, quote, well, let me read the whole thing. Here's his tweet. Quote, very good call yesterday with President Putin of Russia. Tremendous potential for a good slash great relationship with Russia. Despite what you read and see in the fake news media, look how they've misled you on Russia collusion. The world can be a better and safer place. Nice. I think that the (laughs) news media, at least if if I was to listen to MSNBC, would have me to believe that, that Donald Trump is cozy with Russia, so therefore... Um, you know, like this, this shouldn't be surprising, I guess, a long conversation. I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to draw from this. I don't believe what I hear on MSNBC. Mm -hmm. And I find the idea of two guys with nuclear weapons as a possible solution to problems talking a good thing. Absolutely, it's a good thing in the same Talking's way that better than firing missiles. Yes, in the same way that uh, Trump talking with Kim Jong Un was a good thing. Unfortunately, the most recent meeting with Kim Jong Un was cut short early uh, due to, I guess, Kim Jong Un feeling as though he was not being treated fairly by some in the U.S. government. And what's interesting about this position of Trump is it goes against people like John Bolton, who was just called in about in the last segment. In fact, I'll get into a little bit more of the story, but I do want to say thanks to Riley Blake, first and foremost. Number one, for doing the Free Talk Live Digest, because he does that. Uh, It's a daily thing that he does where he kind of whittles down our – we do a three-hour-long radio show. You cut the commercials and the news breaks out, and it comes down to about two hours of just straight-up talk time for the podcast. And then he takes that two hours and then whittles it down to like 20 to 30 minutes uh, with whatever he considers to be the best parts of each show. Those daily digests are located on our podcast feed, which you can subscribe to over at feeds.freetalklive.com. In fact, there's a feed just for the Daily Digest, as well as a feed for the the full shows, but the normal feed has all of them uh, in it. And so thanks to Riley for that, but I'm actually bringing him up to thank him for also being a Free Talk Live gold amplifier, which means that Riley contributes $10 per month uh, to the AMP program over at amp.freetalklive.com. That's A-M-P amp.freetalklive.com. And there's some cool perks that you get for being an amplifier there, for helping us uh, get on more great radio stations around the country. We had the pleasure of announcing uh, welcoming WRKO to weeknights this week. They don't get. Uh, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Yeah, it really well, doesn't. The calls certainly don't get more recognizable. Well, certainly people in the Northeast, all of them, probably, if you've heard talk radio before, you know about WRKO. I don't know how far it, you know, if you're in California, you probably don't know those uh, those call letters, but they're big up in the, in, you know, it's Boston Station, and it's a heritage, I don't know, is heritage the right word for yeah. a station that goes back for many decades? That's right. Um, actually, Doing the same format for a long time makes your heritage. In 1981, I actually did a little research on uh, RKO today when I was writing our, our email update uh, that I sent out this weekend, you know, kind of announcing the good news. And that's like 1981, it's almost a decade before Rush Limbaugh even became a, a talk show. Right, so. as far as being a talk station, yeah, 1981 is about as far back as you could go. Yeah. As an AM. AMs were playing music back then. Exactly. So thanks to Riley for helping us in the AMP program. You can join the AMP program over at ampamp.freetalklive.com. I'm going to read a little bit more from this story on Trump meeting with Putin. Friday, Trump told this is the New York Times, excuse me, this is Bloomberg.com. 
Uh, Trump told reporters the White House or at the White House that Putin had assured him that Moscow isn't seeking to, quote, get involved, unquote, in the crisis in Venezuela, despite assertions by the U.S. president's top national security advisors that the Kremlin is offering critical support to Maduro's regime. So he's countering his own team, basically. He's going against uh, people like John Bolton. Troops said of Putin, uh, Putin. I'm not sure I would trust Putin's word on something like that. Maduro's. I wouldn't trust John Bolton's either. Maduro's guy, I'm not done saying I do. Yep. Maduro's guy is likely Putin, and then Trump yep. has his guy that he'd like to see go in. So I'd say this is, this is an issue that needs to be solved in Venezuela. Not an issue that needs to be solved in Moscow or Washington, D.C. Right. And it also doesn't need to be solved by Moscow or Washington, D.C. troops entering into Venezuela, which is, of course, what a lot of people are afraid is going to happen down there. Um, and with people like John Bolton in charge of uh, that sort of thing, it could very well if he's indeed the warmongering scum uh, that uh, he's been presented as. And I suspect he is. But here's what Trump said about Putin. Quote, he's not looking at all to get involved in Venezuela other then he'd like to see something positive happen for Venezuela. And I feel the same way. The conversation which Trump went on to describe as, quote, very positive, unquote, appeared to be another example of Trump taking Putin's claims at face value, despite contrary evidence from his own government. Spokesperson Sanders said on Friday that Trump simply was, quote, relaying what President Putin said to him, that's it, unquote. The White House National Security Advisor John Bolton and U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo both said, who's, by the way, I think former CIA Uh, said earlier this week that the Kremlin talked Maduro out of leaving Venezuela after U.S.-backed opposition leader Juan Guaido attempted to end his regime by calling for a military uprising. In a video message posted Saturday on Twitter, Pompeo said that during an April visit to Cucuta in Colombia on the Venezuelan border, he had seen, quote, firsthand the misery that Maduro has created with the Russians and Cubans' help. And then going on, on North Korea, the Russian embassy said Putin and Trump, quote, noted the importance of consistent progress towards denuclearization and achieving long-term normalization on the Korean peninsula because Putin had a meeting with Kim Jong-un recently. So uh, I actually, I've had an article about that for a couple of weeks now. We just haven't had a chance, just just hasn't been on the top of my prep stack. Uh, But, you know, we've seen Kim Jong-un reaching out internationally to, uh, you know, Donald Trump has had two meetings with with Trump. There have been some really positive developments uh, in North Korea as far as them stepping down the still ongoing, but, you know, sort of demilitarized conflict, if you will, that's the war between South and uh, North Korea. And so Putin briefed Trump about his meeting with Kim Jong-un. And then, uh, let's see here, hours after their talk, North Korea fired numerous short-range projectiles off its eastern coast, according to South uh, Korean authorities, a move seen as Kim's latest and most provocative signal of frustration over talks with Trump. And in that story about the uh, Putin meeting with Kim Jong-un, let's see here, Kim criticized Washington. This is from APnews.com. Uh, criticized Washington for taking a, quote, unilateral attitude in bad faith at the Trump-Kim meeting that has caused a diplomatic standstill. North Korean state-run news agency said recently, Kim told Putin that the situation on the Korean peninsula has reached a critical point where it could return to tensions and that peace and security will, quote, entirely depend on the U.S.'s future attitude. So Kim's playing a little bit of hardball here. He, you know, he wants sanctions to be removed uh, before he removes some of the you know the nuclear capabilities that his country has is that an unreasonable position from his side of things i don't think it is uh sanctions don't do anything to world leaders they do things to the people the people the, the poorest of people in a given geographic area and you know i, I yeah it's it's not gonna it, it's really not gonna to do much Let's go to Gene. He's the Christian anarchist. Uh, he's on our Discord server. Go ahead, Gene. Yeah, I turned down my media volume. I think that'll help. Um, okay. Anyway, the guy you, that called earlier about aliens, he really makes me miss old Gene Ray and the Time Cube and <laughs> how we're all educated, stupid. I mean, Gene Ray actually had it figured out. He was the real deal. So, Which part? The part where he said that there were four simultaneous days happening at one time? All the parts, everything. Gene Ray was the smartest smartest man in the world. And you can go to our page at freetalklive.com slash interviews. Is that what it is? 
I think that's what it is. I just give out guests.freetalklive.com. Guests.freetalklive.com. Great. And you can see Gene, look up Gene Ray there and, and hear the. Uh, He's he's crazy. More than 10 years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an old interview. He since has passed away, sadly, and uh, the TimeCube website unfortunately went away with him or shortly thereafter, whenever the hosting plan ran out of money. But I suspect you can go and read it over at archive.org, which is a very handy website. Somebody has to be hosting this already. Uh, somebody bought the domain, so you, if you go to timecube.com, it will not show you anything that has anything to do with time, TimeCube. It's some you know, spam or whatever it is. But, uh, yeah, if you go to the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive, go to archive.org, type in timecube.com, and prepare to be amazed at the madness of, but my uh, own personal you. opinion about aliens you got 10 seconds it, go okay we could they they would have no interest in us we're just too tiny of a thing on the in this big old universe for them to be interested in us at all gene the christian anarchist uh well said and uh, we'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime you can join us over at freetalklive.com all right, it's another edition of the Edgington Post Show. I am Mark Edge here for Free Talk Live. Got on the line here a good friend of mine, Mark Warden from Porcupine Real Estate. Mark, you there? I am here, Mark. It's great to talk with you again. And thanks for coming on. So you have been an advertiser on Free Talk Live for a long time. And I imagine people have heard the ads, and it's a great jingle that you've got out there. And uh, they probably don't know much more about you than what they've heard. So I wanted to get you on for an opportunity to talk about what you do. When did you move to New Hampshire for the Free State Project? I moved back in 2007 from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, At the time, uh, the real estate bubble had just burst out in Las Vegas and the, the Southwest and other parts of the country. So it's a good opportunity to look around for something different. And this idea of the uh, libertarian Mecca of New Hampshire and the Free State Project was really growing with me. So I took a leap of faith and moved 3,000 miles out to New Hampshire. And after a couple of years, I got back into the real estate business. And since then, I've been building my business around uh, actually the libertarian movement around free state project people relocating to new hampshire and it's been great yeah um so do you uh i mean it says the the name of your company is porcupine real estate do you do business with people who aren't um you know porcupines or is almost and i'm not saying whether you're willing to obviously you're not excluding people oh sure. sorry i won't do with you business with you you're not a libertarian um real estate agents uh, will take the business where they can get it but um are, are you generally not doing business with uh, those folks or what's happening there about 80 percent of my business is with free state project participants and libertarian types and the other 20% is with the general public. I have good reviews out on Yelp and other places. And I get a lot of referrals from past clients. So uh, naturally, we're going to get some some non-libertarian customers. And I treat them all equally. I love all my clients equally. Um, you know, in, in any business, sometimes you have to be ready to fire your client, fire a customer. And I do that from time to time. You know, I'm not going to deal with somebody who's a total leftist who wants to steal all my money and give it to somebody else. Uh, But I have built my business in this boutique firm style. Uh, We'll just call it a niche audience, really, because clients who are in that circle or that sphere of influence appreciate that I speak the same language. And if they come to me and say, hey, Mark, I want to be able to shoot on my own property or grow chickens or build my own house without zoning regulations, I'm not going to look at them like they're crazy. So it works out well to have this market niche, and so far it's been good to me, and hopefully I'm doing a good service to my clients. Yeah, that's uh, one of the things. Um, you were you helped me get uh, my first property, although um, you know at the, at the time we didn't have a setup. I, I don't believe. I can't remember how you were in business or anything like, but you chatted with me uh, the first go around. And then, um, you know, when I got my second house, you handled the whole thing. The first go around, you helped me find a town that was directly adjacent to Keene, New Hampshire, that had the lowest uh, regulation and property taxes. And, you know, just came up with the some some uh, spreadsheet or something and showed me the 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 differences. This next time around, we had different goals, and you know, you gave me a small warning that 
you know, things weren't going to be quite as uh, peachy as they were with the last property as far as building and <laughs> changing things. And, well, that is, uh, that's true. But, uh, you know, we had, diff- like I said, we had different goals. And I do think that it's comforting to not have to deal with, uh, you know, the, the, the weird looks from a real estate agent. Do you get weird looks from re- other real estate agents? Because you have to do business with them all the time and you're interfacing between, you know, what are unusual clients and uh, the real world. Yes. Typically on the first visit, we'll I'll get some interesting looks and comments from other agents who aren't used to, uh, let's say, our type of crowd. In fact, sometimes I will open carry when showing property uh, as a, a nod to the belief of my clientele and really to show them, hey, welcome to New Hampshire. It's okay to open carry here. Nobody's going to look at your crossways, although some agents do. But after working with them and they've seen how much business I do and how great the clients are and how you know, how good-natured people moving here are and why they're, they're all choosing New Hampshire for the same reasons, it really has developed my reputation and that of the clientele and now most of the other agents uh, will kind of jokingly say, oh, he's the real libertarian realtor. Let's, uh, they'll only actually call me if they have a good piece of property where, let's say, it's great for uh, perm, permaculture or homesteading or shooting on your own property. They'll go out of their way to call me because they know that fits my clientele. Yeah, let me know when you guys find that bunker. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, what kind of properties? So you've had at this point probably certainly dozens, many dozens of libertarian clients. What do they look for? It really varies. I've had over a couple hundred, over 200 transactions just in the last seven years. And in general, they want a town that has a relatively low tax burden compared to its neighbors. And if most people, if they're living out in the suburbs, they want some land, like some um, some elbow room between them and the neighbors. Yeah. Now that said, we do have a lot of people who just want to live in the city. Be, keep in mind that a lot of our clients don't care about the public or government school system, so they're going to homeschool or a private school or something else. So that is often lower on the priority list than other things like taxes and regulations. Right. The average or, uh, home buyer is out there saying, what are the schools like? You know, and they want to know, yeah. you know how efficient is well, that's this? A common thing. And we get that certainly. But here in New Hampshire, the, ta- the taxes, the local property tax rate varies widely from town to town. So it's a huge factor to consider. And if you're new to the state, you don't realize that. And that's where I can really provide some guidance and tell them what's going to work for their particular needs. Right. So New Hampshire has no income tax. It has no sales tax. Or, well, I guess it has a sale, uh, sales tax on prepared food. Um, mm-hmm. And they say the income tax that there's some, I don't know, some lists have it at uh, a small income tax. Uh, some have it at uh, none at all. I think that that has to do with a sort of business tax that I'm not entirely clear on. But um, more or less, there's none of those things. But the property tax is listed as pretty darn high uh, as far as rate goes and that kind of thing. What, um, how do you help people mitigate that? Because I know it varies dramatically from uh, different, you know, some, some municipalities to others. Some, some don't even have it as all, as I understand it. <laughs> That's right. Well, if you're coming from out west like Nevada or California or Arizona, you're probably used to a tax rate about 1% of the value. Another way to say that is that's a 10 mill rate. Yeah, the mill rate's 10. Yep. Mill rate, 10 per thousand. Uh, But out here, you're typically between 20 and 30 on a mill rate. That's two to 3% of the assessed value of the property. But when you look across towns, often they're they're within about 10 or 15% of one another. That's because in some of the low tax rate towns, you're looking at higher valuations or higher assessed values. In the real high tax rate towns like Claremont or Concord, you might be looking at a lower valuation. So um, typically you're looking anywhere from the five thousand to eight eight or nine thousand dollar range per year in property taxes for a home that's valued two fifty to three fifty. 
Yeah, I can say that um, here in Keene, New, uh, in the Keene region, right? In Keene, New Hampshire, prop- property, the, the, the tax rate's high, but in some of the surrounding towns, not nearly so much. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, the towns that I uh, d- directly surround, I know can be half what Keene's is. So it really depends on the region and, and those sorts of things uh, to, to, to some extent. Um, I would imagine that most of your clientele get a hold of you from coming out. You know, you've you've managed to network with the Free State Project, with Free Talk Live, and with a whole bunch of these folks, uh, people who are considering New Hampshire as a move for to find more liberty in their lives. Um, do you? How how do those people get a hold of you? Most of them will hear about uh, me through Facebook. I'm okay, good. quite active on Facebook on the Free State Project page, on some of the Liberty groups. Uh, of course, people can go straight to our website, which is porcupinerealestate.com. And then on Facebook, we have an active presence at Team Porcupine Real Estate. And um, I'm also a sponsor of a lot of the Free State Project events like Porcupine Freedom Festival, which is coming up in June this year. I think that's a, their 12th annual event, which sees about a thousand pro-liberty, small government, pro-freedom type of people gather in northern New Hampshire for a big uh, week-long camping event and festival. And in, the, in February, the Free State Project hosts the New Hampshire Liberty Forum, which is another big event. So I try to be present at those and do some networking and meet as many people as possible. I'm also an activist, as you know, Mark, uh, yeah. currently a state representative in the legislature and uh, foremost, a liberty activist. So just trying to be out there and meet as many people as possible and do, uh, do my civic duty is a good way to, to network and help out uh, people in exchange. Do you find that uh, people uh, come to you because they saw your... Um, NHLA, the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance rating of A plus, um, or that uh, your state rep, um, that, that's why you have the NHLA rating of A plus. Do you find that they find that uh, really, really important and, you know, come seek you out as a result? Yeah, I think a lot of them see that as pretty cool. Now, keep in mind, a lot of people move to New Hampshire for various reasons. Some will come for the natural beauty and the hiking and biking and mountaineering. Others will come for more, let's say, politics or uh, public policy. And those are the folks that I really connect with. They're the ones that say, hey, this guy knows uh, the inside scoop on local and state politics. And they they think that's kind of fun. Whereas people who are more into just homesteading or living out in the country and want to be left alone, they don't care as much. But we'll, we'll have something in common with everybody who wants to move here for more liberty in their lifetime. And, um, you know, do you what, what do you find as far as uh, people who stay? Um, I mean, you're, you're probably one of the best people to ask about this. Certainly you run across people who are buying as opposed to renting. I would guess that buyers tend to stay more than renters. But here in Keene, we've had probably the majority of people who have moved, uh, quote unquote, moved for the Free State Project because, you know, different people have different thresholds for what they call moving. Uh, some people, you know, roll in uh, uh, on a Greyhound bus and other other people bring in a semi full of their stuff. And, you know, so different people have different thresholds. But we've, you know, far fewer than uh, half have remained. Uh, what's it like on your end? What I'm seeing is after people move here, Typically, they blend in, into the community, and we don't necessarily see them a lot. They're not as active in some of the libertarian-specific events and activities, but they just want to be good neighbors and good members of their own community. And often, if when people first move to New Hampshire, they will rent for six months or a year in one of the major cities, uh, for example, Nashua or Manchester, because those are closer to the jobs to the employment base and it's a good place to settle when you get here to sort of learn your way around the state and figure out where you spend most of your time and what you do for extracurricular activities and then after you figure that out then it's time to plant some roots and move into a a town that may be more appropriate for your work commute or what your kids like to do 
or what you like to do for activism. Keen's been great. I've done a number of transactions out, out in the Keen area. Of course, Free Talk Live is a fantastic megaphone for telling people about the Keene area as well as New Hampshire. So if I think if they can come to Keene and you know, as a starting place, as a base of operations, that's great. And then they can take their time to check out the seacoast or the lakes region or the mountains or the bigger cities like Manchester and Portsmouth, you know, then decide where they want to plant some roots and purchase a home. Yeah, it seems like a really good idea to me to uh, rent for a year in New Hampshire, see what uh, see what you think about it all. When you rent, usually you're going to rent in a city. If you rent in a city, chances are that snow removal, which is a big, giant pain in one's butt, um, is mostly handled for you. It's cold, but you can wear more clothes, right? There may be some ice on the sidewalk, but you can put cleats on your feet, uh, on your shoes. Um, but, you know, snow removal, that's something you've got to get out and do yourself, or you've got to hire somebody to take care of. And um, renting helps you to look at where you want to be. Do you want to take on this giant task of uh, snow removal? At Ian's house, um, snow removal is a relatively simple task and not that big of a deal. Uh, on the farm that I used to, to live at, it was a big deal. You had to hire a guy with a truck to come shove that stuff over to the side. And if it snowed a lot that year, the, your, your pathways get really narrowed and, and these sorts of things. Um, do you find that most people rent for a year or do they jump in both feet like Ian did and just buy? It really depends on what their situation is. Some people are moving here with a job or for a job. And if that's the case, if they employment lined up, then they're willing to purchase right away. They know it's going to be a job that they're going to stay in for many years. And so they base their decision on a reasonable commute to that office. Yeah. And we all know what a pain it is to move. Uh, you know, nobody likes that. So if they can avoid having to move twice, then they will. So it really depends on, on their individual situation. But if, typically if they're employed and have a family and are moving here with a relocation package, going to purchase first. And that's when we can really offer a lot of support for them to ease the transition, to line up the place, line up the timing, uh, work on the negotiations so that they only have to move and unpack once. Sounds like a uh, um, the way to go, uh, Mark. Uh, if uh, folks need to get a hold of you, how do they do it? Visit porcupinerealestate.com. I wish I could sing Hannah's jingle, but if they listen to porcupinerealestate.com. And, <laughs> and then if you're on Facebook, still visit us at Team Porcupine Real Estate. Very good. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Looking for a great real estate investment? Consider New Hampshire, which is ground zero for the Liberty Movement. Your first call should be to Mark Warden from Porcupine Real Estate. He's more than just a real estate agent. He's your New Hampshire concierge. Where are the best places to live? Do you want farm, city, the burbs, or forest? Do you want a duplex or multifamily building so that renters pay your mortgage? There are homes in all price ranges in New Hampshire, and Mark can help with financing, too. Invest in Liberty and property. Mark Warden can help. PorcupineRealEstate.com